is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Ohio. Pitching dominated early on opening day, but the price was right for the Red Sox as they spoiled the Indians' home opener. Now the Tribe hopes Carlos Carrasco, who flirted with no hitters on more than one occasion last season, can get the team their first win of the 2016 campaign. We'll see the old slugger, Big Poppy, and the new kid on the block, Francisco Lindor, next on Sports Time Ohio. Underway on the Major League Baseball season. Opening week continues tonight here in Cleveland as the Tribe looks for their first win of the year. Continuing this three game series against the Boston Red Sox right here at Progressive Field. Tribe on the field, guys getting loose. We're going to be about 10 minutes late getting underway as they were preparing the field for play here this evening. Starting pitchers have both headed to the bullpens and they're getting loose, getting ready for action. So, a 10 minute delay in our first pitch time here tonight. Well Boston unveiled their new two hundred million dollar man David Price on opening day but it was the twenty three year old Mookie Betts who might have had the game's biggest impact. Well he's an exciting young player for the Boston Red Sox yesterday he gave him a two to nothing lead his second consecutive year he's hit a, a home run on opening day he's not a big guy but he packs a lot of wallop into his bat and also a beautiful play out in right field came up as a second baseman that that play saved the fifth inning it was a leadoff probably triple if he doesn't make that catch but he made a beautiful catch they held him uh, to, to no runs in that inning and uh, he's going to be a very good good player for the Boston Red Sox he finished 19th in the MVP voting a year ago but there are those in Boston who believe because of his versatility and all around ability power speed defense that he could challenge the likes of Josh Donaldson and Mike Trout for AL MVP honors this year we'll have to obviously wait and see how that plays out taking a look at tonight's pitching matchup Carlos Carrasco will go for the tribe trying to build on a terrific season a year ago and the enigmatic Clay Buckholz will go for Boston. Well Carlos Carrasco probably has the best overall stuff on this tribe staff an outstanding slider he's got a, an explosive fastball pitches ahead in the count that's why he gets a lot of strikeouts 216 last year and Carlos Carrasco one and one in his career against the Boston Red Sox really had a good second half pitched better on the road last year than he did at home but he will be matched up against Clay Buckholz, who his last start was July 10th, had some elbow damage last year, and in his career, two and one against the Indians. He's got a very good curveball. He, he's a very good pitcher when healthy, but is he going to stay in there all year for him? And that's what the Boston Red Sox need. They need, need, need him out there every five days. Yeah, he's entering his 10th major league season, and Rick, yet he's never pitched 200 innings yeah. in any single season. He's like the big T's. They know the abilities in there. He can be phenomenal when he's on. The question is, will he ever fulfill that potential? They're still waiting in Boston. Well, they're going to find out. They want him you know, to, to follow up David Price. It'd be a nice one-two punch if he could do that. We'll have to wait and see. Interesting when you look at the Indians starting lineup tonight. Obviously, with the left-hander David Price on the hill on opening day, Terry Francona went with his right-handed hitting dominant lineup. Rajay Davis was in the leadoff spot. With a right-hander on the hill today, Davis out of the lineup. And now Jose Ramirez is in the lineup. Ramirez is batting in the two-hole right behind Francisco Lindor. With more on Ramirez, let's go down and join Andre Nott. Well, guys, I think it's going to be interesting for Jose Ramirez as we go forward. I think Terry Francona likes the athletic ability he brings to the team. And really, until Michael Brantley is back, I think we're going to see Ramirez play five, six days a week, whether it's in left field, whether it's at third base. And the one thing that we've been able to notice, if you think about when he came back to the team last year in the month of August of September, he was a guy that was kind of in the middle of everything when he was in the top of the order. Now, when Brantley came back last year, they moved him back to the bottom. And I remember we all had that discussion of, you know, where does he fit best in the lineup? And obviously with the lefty on the mound yesterday, they didn't use him that way. But I know from being around the players and being around the guys, Jason Kipnis has told me this. He goes, look, if we can get the best of Jose Ramirez going, he changes us and he gives us a dynamic that we really don't have. It'll be interesting to see how Terry Francona kind of juggles the lineup until Michael Brantley is back with the team. But I know Ramirez is ready to get out to left field. He's still not totally comfortable with the throws from left field, but really you don't have to make too many big throws from left field early on, do you? 
Well, you know, the one thing, too, Rick, uh, you know, with Jose Ramirez, he's a young guy. He's taking over that role that Mike Avilas previously filled. Avilas was a veteran. He knew the league. He knew all the pitchers. He really knew that role. Not an easy role for a young player to suddenly jump into and adapt to, is it? Well, not when you're going out to play the outfield, but he's, he's a very talented kid. You know, he came up as a shortstop, so you're, you're a pretty good athlete. But you still need reps. You know, if you're going to go out there and you're going to get that much playing time, you know, I'm surprised he didn't get more work maybe in spring, earlier in spring in the outfield, but it's tough out there in Arizona. But he's one guy that if he goes out there, hopefully he can, he can fill it fill it every you know, four or five days or whenever Tito's going to need him. And to Andre's point, the one question you might have is the arm strength. Right. Does his arm play in the outfield when he's primarily been a middle infielder? Well, we'll see. That, I mean, you're going to stretch that out. And if he's playing in the left field, that's a shorter throw than any of the other three. Just get to the ball, hit your cutoff, man, and your job is done as an outfielder. Well, Andre, Matt, I know you talked to Tyler Naquin before today's ball game. He's going to make his uh, debut as a starter. Did have a pinch hit appearance yesterday in the opener. I know the butterflies have to be floating big time for him. Yeah, Matt, he told me, he goes, as much as I don't like striking out and I don't like that being my first major league at bat, he goes, I felt a lot better and a lot more normal today when I walked into the clubhouse. He goes, I can actually feel my feet hit the ground. <laughs> he said, you know, he said, you know, everybody can tell you what it's going to be like the first time. He goes, but you don't know until you get in that box and it's the major league, you know, field and stadium. He says he's glad he got that out of the way. He just wants to contribute at the end of the day. And to go back on the Ramirez, something that you mentioned, Matt, I, I think that's why they want to play him so much early on because it's not a normal position to have a young player like this. He's 23 years old and he's suddenly the utility guy. And I think Terry Francona is very cognizant of that. That's why they want to play him as much as they can early on. Rick, you probably remember those days when you came up as a young player. It doesn't do you any good to sit on the bench. You've got to be able to go out there and play and play almost on an everyday basis. Well, don't you, you want to play every day. There's no question. You get to the big leagues, you're answering your dream. His goal is to go out there and play, and he wants to relax. And that first hit, when it comes, he'll relax. And yeah, he's going to get it. Everything will be fine. And you want to see him take off from that because that kid earned a job on this team this spring. He played for it. And now you want to see him go out there and earn a spot to stay out there every day. Well, and the fact that David Price won't be on the hill. Hopefully we'll enable the Indians offense to get going a little bit more. They had some hits off David Price. It wasn't like he completely stymied them, but there were no extra base knocks on opening day. No extra base hits. It was brutal weather. You're looking at one of the best pitchers. It's one of those things. Believe me, that's that's not a bad thing. You just you know when you go into a game like that, you're going to have to it's going to be a one run game and you, you better beat them three to two or two to one. All right. Just a reminder for those of you tuning in. A 620 first pitch time. So just a few more minutes away from Indians Red Sox round two in this three game opening series here at Progressive Field. Alan Jensen will be up next as we get ready for Tribe Red Sox part two next. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. And by your local Toyota dealers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places.
It's the Red Sox game two in this three game opening week series set to go in about 10 minutes first pitch delayed to 620. We're getting the field ready. We had some rain earlier tonight Jensen but uh, I'll tell you what overall compared to yesterday it's a little bit breezy but it's about 25 degrees warmer. Too. Uh, I think tonight too you're going to see the starting pitchers too. You're going to have a little bit better grip on the ball and not that Bryce and Kluber didn't have that last night much more baseball weather though so probably see a lot more sharpness to some breaking balls and plays right into Carlos Carrasco's repertoire. Let's talk more about Carlos Carrasco will make his first start of the season here tonight. He's number two in the starting rotation for the tribe right behind Corey Kluber in many ways. Indians fans and some of the players and coaches they all believe that they've got two aces with Corey Kluber and Carlos Carrasco. We've talked about how far he's come since 2014 when he was added to the rotation 40 starts since August of 2014 and ERA at 299 Jensen overall what has impressed you the most about Carrasco going as a starter to the bullpen and then back to the starting rotation well, it takes a lot of mental fortitude I think when you have a guy that in any pitcher if you get demoted uh, you're going to be upset and you're going to try and find what got you to the big leagues it's almost like you're overthinking sometimes and you know, what Carlos Carrasco did and a lot of credit to Mickey Calloway and Kevin Cash they really simplified the process for Carlos Carrasco he went down to the bullpen you heard a lot you know the past couple of years the bullpen mentality and I think Carlos has simplified his process he's simplified his attack it's allowed his talent to take over and he's got a boatload of that all right Jensen let's go Fox Vision here with Carlos Carrasco and the movement that he has on his pitches really all four of the pitches he throws have exceptional movement on and you see where the off speed begins here this is a change up that starts down and away and it goes out of the strike zone a lot of what you're going to see here on Fox Vision is the corners of the strike zone here again Against Ben Zobris. Look at this. Down and in. That's absolutely filthy on a slider that's breaking so late. Zobris has no chance. You can see again, this one I think is one of my favorites. Look where Roberto Perez is set up. This thing nose dives right at the end. This is another change up. Down and into a right hander, a right on right change. Rarely seen, highly effective. And now you'll see the big breaking ball coming over. That's a slider, ladies and gentlemen, and that's off the table. Carlos Carrasco, now the arsenal. You set it out. He's got elite stuff. He's got ace in the making stuff and it all began with his mentality. He's a guy that's attacked from pitch number one much in the same way that David Price was yesterday. Corey Kluber the same way now and I think he's going to be a bedrock for this rotation for years to come to have the type of control that Carrasco has too that also makes him so incredibly effective with Great. all those pitches. Yeah let's take a look at some numbers here though on Carlos Carrasco in those 40 starts since he rejoined the rotation in August of 2014. His record really should be better because he should have gotten a little bit more run support when you get past that though and you look at everything else all the ratios the opponents batting average the homers allowed it's all impressive Yeah, for me you look at the walks obviously his strikeout to walk ratio is almost five to one six to one and really the home runs allowed too. you're not hurting yourself he's getting a lot of swing and misses we hear all the time about how this Indians rotation is strikeout oriented and it's a credit to their stuff you see right here just on the video I mean when you see guys that swing and miss this far I mean, have weak contact like you see here that's such an advantage for the Indians defense as well because now you don't have as many balls put in play you're not having as many chances to possibly have airs now the Indians are very lucky because their infield is what it is very gold glove caliber I think and shortstop we saw what Mike Napoli has been able to do and he's healthy Juan Uribe has been very good at third base in his career and I don't think Kipnis gets enough credit but when you think about what Carlos Carrasco does start to start now young guys have to find a routine they have to find an identity he's found that and now he's being an example for the rest of this rotation as well. Jensen you pitch to the major leagues you understand what it's like to put movement on pitches it's something that's not easy to do he gets so much movement on his balls that's something that a lot of young pitchers are trying to do what's the best way to go about that is it is it arm <laughs> slot is it grip is it what is it well, part of its DNA uh, you know, thank Carlos and thank his parents too for how that all came together but you look at the extension and you watch where I, I always love to watch Pedro Martinez speaking of former Boston guys 
his fingers were so long and he could got so much extension his dexterity of his off speed pitches and the command that he had of that it really played well and I think also fastball command a lot of guys you don't have to throw that hard you watch what Greg Maddox used to do he was 85 86 miles an hour but he could make it dance in and out of the strike zone his changeup was pinpoint he could throw a curveball for a strike when he needed to Carrasco has started to get into that mold now he's armed with the the 90s you know the mid 90 fastball that certainly helps but when you're able to get as many swing and misses and you don't have as many balls put in play you're going to be elite for years to come. All right it's Carrasco against Buckholz here tonight at Progressive Field game two in the 2016 season first pitch coming up in about five minutes up next Ashley Collins for our brand new studios in downtown Cleveland make sure you stick around then Matt and Rick will be back with the first pitch for tonight's game. Progressive field. The field is ready for play. Just awaiting the starting pitchers to give the thumbs up, and we'll be underway here tonight on a much warmer evening than we had uh, yesterday for opening day. It'll be about 63 degrees at game time, and the most important element is that the wind tonight is not blowing in off the lake and keeping everything in a deep freeze. It's actually coming up out of the south, so the wind will be carrying the ball. 
out toward right and right center field this evening. Interesting to see how that may have an impact on tonight's game because once again a very good pitching matchup as Carlos Carrasco and the Indians take the field for game two of the 2016 season. Here's a lineup that Carrasco will face tonight for John Farrell's Boston Red Sox. Mookie Betts will lead it off and Dustin Pedroia who went hitless in the opener. Xander Bogarts hitting third. David Ortiz in his final season bats cleanup. Hanley Ramirez is fifth. Travis Shaw batting sixth. Then it's Brock Holt, Blake Swihart, and Jackie Bradley Jr. And tonight's Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher for the tribe. It'll be Carlos Carrasco. Carrasco a year ago, 14 and 12 with a 363 earned run average. He pitched better on the road. He had nine wins on the road. He had five here at Progressive Field in the ERA of a little over five. So we'll see if he can turn that around and pitch very well at home this year. Carrasco in his career one and one in this will be his third start against the Red Sox. This will be his fifth appearance against Boston. Two guys have hit him well. Basically that's it Ortiz and Pedroia. Now we can check out the Indians defense brought to you by Jeep. It looks like this. It'll be Ramirez in left Naquin in center Bird is in right. It'll be Uribe at third Lindor at short Kipnis is at second Napoli at first with Gomes doing the catching. Bill Welke has the plate tonight. Vic Carapaza is at first base DJ Rayburn at second and the crew chief John Hirschbeck down at third. Carlos Carrasco. Ready to get this one underway against Mookie Betts. First time that Carrasco will start a game this early in a season. As he gets the ball in game two. And the first pitch, high fastball. 1 0. Mookie Betts, a two run homer in the opener for Boston. Two run homer and an outstanding catch in right field. That fastball finds the zone to even the count of 1 and 1. with that fastball that one had a lot of run to it looks like he cut underneath it that ball and it started to it was taking off coming right at bets you can see how the, the movement goes he has to get up and get out of the way and a 2 1 pitch Fastball, letter high, and he swings through it two and two. Yeah, 95 mile an hour fastball. Good velocity. Well, he's coming out and he's trying to establish that fastball here right out of the gate. Well, that's what you want to do. You haven't pitched in a while, you want to get a feel for it. Especially that first time through the lineup. Locate it. There it is. Another good one. That is just straight heat by Mookie Betts, one away. Let's make this, and it's the very first hitter, our Circle K strike gun. There's uh, no mystery here. It's nothing but a four seam fastball. Let's go. I'm challenging you, and he throws it by him. So the first out tonight will be a strikeout for Carrasco. Here is Dustin Pedroia. He looks at a high heater for ball one. He had his opening day hitting streak stopped yesterday without getting a base hit. What was it at nine, yeah, I believe? A nine year streak. He was the only Red Sox player since 1913 to hit a nine straight opening day starts in his career. Pedroia, 18 hits shy of 1,500 in his career. He's a guy that uses the whole field, and thus the Indians defensively 
pretty much play him straight up. Well he's a high fastball hitter I can tell you that he loves getting after it. there was a high fastball there and he was able to catch up to it's going to hop into the yeah. seats for a ground rule double ground rule double he loves a high fastball. And when you throw as hard as Carrasco it doesn't surprise you that he takes it the other way but he tracked it and caught it just about middle of the plate. And not a big guy Pedroia but he has a lot of pop in that bat. You know we talk about when we face the Minnesota Twins Brian Dozier good high fastball this yeah. guy's just they're in the same boat. Both those guys. They love it upstairs. Now Xander Bogarts. Red Sox shortstop was 0 for 5 on opening day. And he checks on a good fastball that was inside for ball one. Bogart's a guy that's an outstanding hitter. Had a, had a great year last year hitting 320 uses the whole field not a power guy. But he finds a way to put it in play and you can see that high leg kick with the movement that Carrasco has on that baseball right now. It's going to be tough watch that front foot go up and he gets it down but by the time he can try and get those hands through he can't hold up. So the movement on that pitch just takes care of Bogarts. right back Bogarts truly made a quantum leap from two years ago to last season when he raised his batting average 80 points from 240 in 2014 to 320 last year. There's a real good chance he won't do that again. Otherwise. Ted Williams that has some company in the 400 <laughs> yeah. club. One two pitch. You, know, you get stop and think about that 75 years now. Since Ted Williams hit uh, 406. Yeah that's 75 you'll years. You'll never see anybody hit 400 again. I don't think. It hasn't happened in that long, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's so hard. I witnessed a couple of guys try, Carew, uh, George Brett, and you have some guys that get after it for a little while, but boy, the day to day grind and as many different pitches as they face throughout the course of the year. I think that may be a bigger factor than anything else, even, even the media scrutiny. It's the fact that after the sixth inning, you're just facing nothing but nasty arms yeah. coming out of the bullpen. 95 plus, it seems like every time, and it's it's hard to do. Oh, and the hitting streak. Now, if you have a hitting streak, you, you get into to 20 games, the media is just all over you. Now the 2-2. Bogarts lays off. And a full count. So he's put up a quality at bat here. With one out in the first inning. David Ortiz waits on deck just underway here in Cleveland. Dustin Pedroia with a one out double in scoring position. And the 3 2 to Bogarts. Popped him up back out of play. And we'll do it again. Defense like the alignment for Pedroia. Same way for Bogart. Straight up, no shift. He lays off, checked his swing, and it's ball four. And so now two on with one out for David Ortiz as Jan Gomes goes out for a quick chat with Carrasco. You know. Yesterday in the ninth inning, David Ortiz in his final season, his final opening day. And in his final at bat, he sent one out of here, a two run shot that pretty much 
put the game away for Boston. Yeah, Trevor Bauer throwing a lot of fastballs, and he threw one right in the wheelhouse of Ortiz. And that was an eight pitch at bat for Xander Bogart. So Ortiz standing in the on deck circle had a lot to look at from Carrasco. You know, you look at Carlos last year when he struggled, it was in the first inning. He had an ERA of 683 until he settled in. And then the rest of the game after that first inning, it was right at three. Well, Ortiz showed he can still hit the fastball, even if he has to get the bat started a little bit sooner than he oh, used yeah. to. But he's two for five in his career against Carrasco. To left field. And Jose Ramirez makes the play for out number two. Here are the keys to the game tonight brought to you by Wayside Furniture. You know Carrasco has the great fastball but the secondary pitches will be really important for him tonight that slider in particular. Clay Buckholz will he have a good feel for his curveball that's a devastating pitch for him and Tyler Naquin making his first major league start here tonight he's in center field. So two on two out and Hanley Ramirez steps in. He went two for four yesterday in the opener. And that ball ran in off the plate for ball one. Now it's uh, right now for Carlos 0 for 5 on first pitch strikes. Normally he's a strike throwing machine. And this is a, a Boston team that most of them are patient. They will make you get into the strike zone, but he hasn't thrown a first pitch strike yet. He checks and it's up high, 2 and 0. Oh. You can see Gomes trying to get Carrasco to maybe back off just a little bit. Hey, he's probably amped up. It's, yeah. it's not opening day, but it's his first start. He wants to go out and impress. Well, I think anytime you get out there, once you get that first uh, hitter out of the way, which he, he struck out bets, but right now he may be overthrowing that fastball a little bit. High in the zone. That was a good pitch, but didn't get the call. And now it's 3 0. Check it out on our Nissan pitch tracker. But again, as the hitter, when it's 2 0, they can be much more select. He's keyhole in there. He's looking for sure. one, one thing and one thing only. Absolutely. If it's not that fastball in the middle middle part or in or in your exactly what you're looking for, you don't have to swing at it. Swings at that one and Carrasco flags it down and throws him out to get out of the jam. No runs a hit, two left. Carrasco wriggles off the hook, and now the Indians are coming to bat when we come back.
Different looking lineup for Terry Francona against the right hander Clay Buckholz. Drive starting lineup presented by Progressive and Francisco Lindor will lead it off tonight to switch it or Jose Ramirez will bat second. Jason Kipnis looking for his first hit of the year will bat third. Mike Napoli hits cleanup then it's Carlos Santana. Jan Gomes bat sixth. Marlon Byrd, Juan Uribe and Tyler Naquin will round it out. Lindor steps in two for four yesterday with a run score and takes ball one from Buckholz. Buckholz will use the fastball. He'll sink that fastball. He'll cut it. And he's got a, a very impressive curveball. In the change up. Yep. Like Speaking right of, there. yeah, <laughs> exactly right. About 79 miles per hour change up going down on the way to the left handers. Lindor ahead of the count, two and one. And he chased the Helped ball. him out. Maybe a little cutter there. Cut fastball down and in. You see, it's it's a little off his fastball, but you can see the movement, almost like a, a little cut to it right at the end. Down and in, he swings over the top of it. Oh, yeah, come back. And that one almost caught the inside yeah. corner, just missed in a full count. Caught a break right there, it looks like. It looked like a pretty good pitch from here, but that ball has some comeback to it. It's right there, but boy, oh boy, that's. Catching a break here. And the payoff pitch swung on and missed. Pulled the string on him. One away. And tonight's Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher is Clay Buckles, who was 7 7 last year. His season ended July 10th. He had uh, an elbow strain, and they ended up putting him on the 15 day. He went to the 60 day, uh, but he pitched very well. 326 earned run average only allowed six home runs in his 113 innings. So you can see he's a field guy that, that moves it in and out. He's got a nice, nice touch to it. Jose Ramirez right back through the box, and the Indians have a one out hit here in the first inning. Jose kept his hands back nicely on the changeup and just uh, put a nice swing on it. Didn't try and do too much to it. It goes right back up the middle. That ball was away. You try and pull it, you roll over on it, you hit a grounder to second base, but the hands were back and hit it right back where it came from. So Ramirez gets the Indians first hit and gets them going here in the first. And up Jason Kipnis. Kipnis 0 for 4 yesterday. There's the breaking ball. Get me over strike one. That's a great pitch for a pitcher. You know, the first pitch. Just yeah. throw it for a strike. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a wipeout pitch or a chase pitch. Throw it for a strike. Your hitters are normally going to take it because they're looking for the fastball or something that they can drive. Can you, know, you ever remember going up looking for a first pitch well, ball against a starter? Well, it depends. If you face the guy, yes, yeah. you, you can do that. I used to do it all the time against a guy like Tommy John or something like that. But that's after you build a history with a guy. But for the most part, when we're only playing them one time here, one time in Boston, you don't get to face or really get a book on these guys. So. Um, you're pretty much going to look for the fastball, and especially in your first at bat, you're not going to want to go after a breaking ball and make it out on one pitch. Tom Candiotti, another guy with the duckle ball, will mm -hmm. throw you a curveball strike one a lot of times. Jason checks. He did not go. One ball, one strike. 
Kipnis an all star for the second time in his career last season. He had a month of May that we may never see the likes of again 51 hits. Last year in the month of May he was the American League player of the month. Follows this one back. Yeah well it was two three hits every single every day. day. Yeah. It was fun to watch. And in fact if I. I may be wrong but. Didn't he get. Hits number 50 and 51 on the last day of the he, month last year. Yeah. So it's another two right. hit game. Yeah. Jose Ramirez held by Hanley Ramirez at first base. And it's bounced in there. Nice block by Swihart. If that gets away, Ramirez can easily go to second base. Actually picked it. Watch this ball go down and in, and I mean, boom, and right into the glove. Yeah. That, you're right, you're just trying to stop it or smother it, but he ended up catching it. Stairs from Buckholtz, and he did with it what you were supposed to. Well done. Got a, a little sinking fastball, one running away from him, up and out over the plate. Jason stayed back nicely and drove it into the gap, and the Indians will play from in front. Yellow would bring in the lumber for Jason Kipnis. His first ribby, first double, had a way to go, he's saying. This is where the Indians last year were good, very good when they play from in front. Now Mike Napoli with a runner in scoring position. And it takes that breaking ball low and away. Napoli 0 for 3 yesterday did draw a walk at a number of lengthy at bats, which is par for the course when Mike's at the dish. Sees more pitches than just about anybody. Per plate appearance. Checks on a ball that's just off the strike zone and well, quickly ahead 2 0. Oh. You'll hear us talk about that, but the guy on deck also is not far behind Napoli when it comes to seeing pitches per plate appearance either. Santana. They're both going to make pitchers work to get him out, that's for sure. Blown away, 3 0. Oh. Jason Kipnis, who we talked about the month of May he had last year. The doubles was the big part of that month. And of the 51 hits, 15 doubles in the month of May. What a month, huh? They never have another one like that the rest of your career, but that's one you'll never forget. Yeah. You know, when you're locked in, it seems like everything you see is, is like a beach ball. Trying to get himself home. Mike Napoli can connect here. And on the 3 1 pitch, it's high, ball four. So three straight have reached safely for the Indians after the strikeout by Lindor to start the game. And remember, Lindor had to count in his favor 3 and 1, I think, in that at bat, and he ended up coming back to get the strikeout. Here's the Red Sox defense. Holt, Bradley, and Betts in the outfield. Shaw, Bogarts, Pedroia, Ramirez on the infield. Swihart catching. Told you about the Indians scoring first. Uh, last year, 53 and 14 was their record when they were able to jump up top. Only the Tigers had a better record than the Indians when scoring first last year. And when they didn't score first, ooh. Indians were just 28 and 66. So hopefully a good omen here this evening. With two on and only one out. Carlos Santana looks at ball one down low. Buckholtz 
working from behind almost every hitter now. Well, that's you're not going to see the aggressiveness of hitters. That's what's nice after Kipnis got a ball up in the zone, give them their first run. Napoli, he couldn't throw a strike too. He misses with Santana on the first one. A little bit high, 2 and 0, oh, and out goes Blake Swihart. Farrell looking on. And normally, Buckholtz, he's not a guy that is a wild pitcher. I mean, last year, even though he only made 18 starts, in those 18 starts, he only walked 23 yeah. batters. Control pitcher, keeps the ball in play, doesn't give up many home runs. Right. You know, right now he hasn't started since July 10th. I told you was his last start. So this is all new. You missed all the second half of last year. So coming out, even though you have a you know a productive string, you know spring, and you go back out there, there's still a big difference in getting back into game action. 3-0 pitch. Bullseye finds the strike zone. Three and one to Santana. You know the longest tenure pitcher for the Red Sox. This is his 10th season. So it doesn't matter how long you play. When you miss some time at the big league level, there's always some catch up work to do, whether it's one season or stretches over two. Santana drives one. Deep center field. Bradley back. Looking up. Goodbye. Carlos Santana clobbers a three run homer to straight away center field. Jump to a 4 0 first inning lead. Oh, baby, Carlos Santana in a 3 1 count. You're looking for something to hammer, and he did not miss. Well, the, you pitch in behind in the count. That one was away. He gave him a lot of swinging room, and Santana drives it straight to center field. Buckholtz knew it. As soon as it left the bat, he, he knew that one was not coming back. That one was outside to off the plate. That's the extension that Santana has. And he hit it a long way. So Carlos gets his first, and it's a big one, a three pointer. You know, I don't think of Santana as being a guy who's on top of home plate, but usually guys who get on top of home plate are the guys that maybe had trouble getting to that outside pitch. But he had no trouble. Getting to that ball as he does a little shake and a shimmy in the dugout. Jan Gomes, a towering fly to right. And the catch made by Betts for out number two. <laughs> Carlos Santana looking for a big year. Indians hold a club option on him for next season. Many have speculated that well, it is a big year for Santana. I just think for the Indians to succeed, they need him to be productive. They don't need him to go out and try to hit 40 home no, runs, but I, they need him to be productive. I period. want to see him get off to a good start. Maybe that'll help because always digging out of the hole. The first two months, April and May, have been terrible for Carlos. I'd love to see him get off to a good start and see if it makes him relax and you know he goes by and takes a little easier. Well one thing that we saw in that first inning is something that you harped on for many years as the 0 1 pitch goes to Bird for a strike and that is team concept don't try to do too much and you saw the veteran Mike Napoli up there right. taking pitches looking for a strike didn't get a strike didn't go out of the strike zone didn't help the pitch up took Take his walk. walk right and then Santana benefits. Well I think the the veteran players that are in here Napoli we've got Bird you've got Davis you got Uribe those guys are going to help Carlos I think just mentally mm -hmm. they're going to get to his head you know a, a couple of Latin players Uribe should help him out a little bit. One two offering. Bird broke his back rolls to third Travis Shaw. Makes a good throw, and the inning is over. But the Indians strike first tonight in the first. Jason Kipnis starts the scoring with an RBI double. Santana with a three-run homer.
Think as we go to the second inning. And Travis Shaw will lead it off for the Red Sox. And the Ohio native had two hits in the opener yesterday. Takes a strike. Won the everyday third baseman job spring training. Which sent Pablo Sandoval to the bench for Boston. And he squibs one up the third baseline. But this guy loves to hit against the Indians. So I had a couple hits yesterday. Played in six games against them last year, and he's right back at it again. Another hit tonight. Now bring up Brock Holt. Brock Holt had two hits yesterday, both of them carbon copies, in which he just took a pitch and just shot it to left field. Jose Ramirez will play in, play shallow and left, try to take that opposite field dying quail away from him. Carrasco gets ahead with a strike. This is a guy that had a big hit yesterday's ball game off. Kluber just served it to left field to break the 2 2 tie. Finds a way to put the ball in play. Two strikes on him, went down probably out of the strike zone. And didn't do much with it, serves it to left field. And there's the go ahead run at the time. A bit high. And now the count three and one. Side out of play. Now full count. Year Brock Holt was truly a jack of all trades. He became the first Red Sox player to appear at second base, third base, right field, left field, shortstop, first base, and center field in back to back seasons. So he also did it in 2014, starting games at seven different. Now I wonder how many positions. different gloves he uses. What if he just has one for the outfield and one for the infield? Or oh, he's got to have a first baseman's get. Well, that so, yes. Yeah. Ball's hit pretty well. Deep right field. Bird is back, chasing back, and it's over his head and gone. So Brock Holt, not noted for his power, last year he hit two home runs, but he socks a two-run shot out of here in the second inning to get Boston on the board and right back in the ball game. Well, it looked like Carlos came right back and challenged him and says, you know, he's not going to walk him. And he fouled off that last one down the third baseline, but he has a heater right down the middle. Belt high. And boy, he, he juiced it. That's a, that's a big knock for him, boy. Got it out of here. Nice catch by a fan. And right back comes Boston. Cuts the lead in half, makes it a 4 to 2 game. Up and away, ball one. 
Last year Carlos gave up 18 home runs on the year. 14 of those 18 were solo shots. Well he's he's fighting himself a little bit just trying to find that good command here. Well you can see 16 balls 17 strikes out of his 33 pitches and normally he's a guy that's right around 65 percent. It's out of play. Blake Swihart was the catcher from Boston yesterday on opening day and at 24 years old. The Red Sox youngest opening day catcher since Rich Gedman back in 1983. I remember him when Gedman was only 23 years old at that time. Pulls it foul. Stays three and two. We have nobody out here in the second inning. Carrasco already fast approaching 40 pitches. It's hit well to deep center field. Make one back on the track and makes the catch. Up against the wall in deep center field for out number one. With more on Carlos Carrasco, let's go down to Andre. You know, guys, just interesting watching Carlos get this start. He had one less start in the spring uh, compared to all the other starting pitchers. Now, his last start down in Goodyear it was on that getaway day when the team was getting away to get to Texas, and he pitched great. And Tito Francona let him pitch longer because he hadn't pitched as much during spring training. So you just wonder if because of that one less start, does that kind of mess with his mechanics early on today? Well, it's hard to tell. He's got to get a feel for it, and right now it's, it's all about command. I haven't seen a lot of sliders. That's probably his yeah. best out pitch, Andre, is that slider. And right now he's having a tough. There it is. There's one right there as we speak. Um, I've seen a lot of four seamers, two seamers, and change ups compared to the slider. Swung out of miss. Well, that was a good change up. And it's 0 2. Jackie Bradley Jr. With a shift on three to the right side of the infield for the Indians. Strike three call. And Carrasco on three pitches disposes of Bradley for out number two. Well, it didn't mess around on that at bat. Slider, change up slider. There it was on the outside edge. It just stayed there right on the corner. Nice sequence there for Carrasco. And a strike called to Mookie Betts. Carrasco just overpowered Betts in his first at bat. And he stayed nothing but fastballs in that first at bat. Good low dart, but Betts lays off. It's one and one. Center field. The inning is over. 
But Boston gets right back in the ball game thanks to a two run home run from Brock Holt. 4 2 Indians, middle of the second. Cleveland on top. Bottom of the second inning. Juan Uribe to lead it off for the Indians. Uribe had a hit in four trips to the plate yesterday. Big bouncer to short. And Bogarts throws him out one away. Well, some sad news to pass along. Right before the start of the season, a couple of long time Indians fans passed away. I want to send out our condolences to the families of Homer Coomer from Maslin, Ohio. Grew up in Akron, went to many games as a youngster and listened and watched all the ball games on TV and radio in his later years. And Chuck Clemens of Cleveland, age 80, passed away just last Monday as a longtime season ticket holder and watched and listened to all the ball games as well. So condolences to their families. Tyler Naquin takes the called strike. Naquin, a tremendous spring in which he won the spot on the ball club as a center fielder. Not on the starting lineup yesterday with the lefty David Price on the hill. But chances are we'll see him on a almost everyday basis in center field. Oh yeah. Let's uh, see him get that first hit, get it out of the way, and move on from there. He did get a pinch hit appearance yesterday and Andre told us earlier that Naquin said I just felt a lot more normal today walking into the clubhouse just just having that one at bat under his belt. Up high with it two and two. That one off to stay alive. It's not all that often that uh, a player makes his major league debut with zero, not even a single day in the big leagues on that opening day roster. A lot of guys will get that call up and get a little experience, maybe make the club the next year, but for an Aquin. Opening day, his first day in the big leagues. Checks on the ball in the dirt. He held up. Full count. Yeah, that I mean 
they don't remember. I, I, I don't think they know exactly who the last one was, was it? It's been a while. I think they said CC Sabathia. Remember, we had Chris on in spring training, and they go back if when they, when they said that Tyler was going to make the team. Hop back out of play. Putting up a pretty good at bat here. And a 3 2 pitch is fouled right back to the screen. You know, yesterday with that starting outfield, the Indians had three outfielders on opening day, all making their Indians debut. That hadn't happened since 1973. When George, George Hendrick, Hendrick Charlie Gosper. Spikes, and Gosper. Rosendo Torres. Oh, Rusty. Yeah, Chris. Chris yeah. 3 2 pitch line into right field from Naquin. And he's got his first major league hit. Got a boy got a nice breaking ball and kept his hands back speeds up his bat and smokes it into right field that ball will go into the dugout for the trophy case. Well his first start his first at bat as a starter base knock and stayed back nicely on the three two hook he fouled off a good fastball a pitch before but kept his hands back and smokes it into right field congratulations. Oh, with more on these uh, Indians rookies, let's go down quickly to Andre. I did some research on it. Last time a rookie started on the opening week of the season when a position player was catcher Andy Allison, 1986. Okay. Wow, good research. Position player, you're right. Yeah, because there was a note here that Trevor Crow made the opening day roster back in uh, 09, but I don't. He wasn't a. He wasn't a starting. Player on that 09 club. No. It's a good at bat though for Naquin. I mean, starts out 0 2, ends up with a nine pitch at bat, fouls some off, and finds a base hit in the right field. Now we'll see what Lindor can do. Struck out his first time up. And Buckholtz had him way out in front with that. Off speed pitch, it's 0 and 2. He slaps up the third baseline, but foul. Rick, is there an advantage or a disadvantage for a young player? I'm thinking of Lindor, who came up last year and his first time in the big leagues. I mean, he's thrown kind of right into the fire, batting up in the top of the order in that two-three hole, you know, kind right. of area. For Naquin batting ninth, is is it any easier for him batting down on the lineup? Will he get more fastballs, it, more challenge? It more? doesn't matter. You just want to get in the lineup. It doesn't. It, for a young player, you, you're trying to get to the big leagues. You're here. Um, they may work you a little bit different, but. With Lindor last year, he was sitting between Kipnis and Brantley. What more can you ask for? I mean, once you prove you can hit the fastball, they'll start going to work on you. And once you you have a series, uh, you know, scouts are in the seats. They're going to see what you hit and document it. And they have footage and they they watch everything. They'll make adjustments uh, per series. So uh, you know, yeah. Ramirez kind of knocked back onto his seat, but he makes the play on Lindor for out number two. Naquin moves in the scoring position. Hanley Ramirez trying to make himself into a first well, baseman. It, and the thing is, just make your play. Get it out every time out. This is going to be new for him. It'll take a while for him to get used to playing first base. You know, but he, he played shortstop before. And if you can play shortstop in the big leagues, you figure you, he's going to have to work at it, but he might be able to play first base and, and be adequate over there. Just, you try and make the routine plays and don't do anything spectacular. I would think, based on what happened to him last year in left field, he's got to love first base. Well, you're in on every pitch as an infielder, and that's probably what you're used to. You go into the outfield after from the infield, and uh, it's it can be a little boring. 
start carrying on conversations with fans. Jose Ramirez, a two-out base hit in the center field. Nate Winner out there is going to try to score. Bradley Stroh way offline. He will score. In the second base, Ramirez beats the tag. And the Indians now have a 5-2 advantage. Oh, Jose Ramirez with his second hit of the night. And a two-out RBI single to plate Tyler Naquin. Now, that's what I love, this base hit right here, because you add on to their run that they scored. It's a two-out base hit. And the throw, you can see by Bradley, way off line, not even close. It allows Ramirez to go to second base. So it's a big base hit to get a run back for the Tribe. Well, one thing you saw right there is what may be different with this Indians club than maybe what we've seen in years past and that is that speed factor the ability to bottom of the order you get a number nine hitter like Naquin who has good wheels and scores on that base hit to center field. You know I, with the throw from Bradley I, I saw that ball when it was hit the, the outfield a little darker for you can see where the tarp was it hit and it looked like it might have been a little wet mm -hmm. so that ball might have slipped out of his hand on the throw. But you're right. Anytime but with two outs and you get those young guys, you're going to send them. Mike Zarba is going to send them. Here comes Naquin all the way. Two outs, you expect to score. Throw way off line, as I mentioned. And that throw allows Ramirez to get himself in scoring position. Jason Kitten is straightened up by that pitch from Buckholz. And it's two and one. Kip ripped a double. And it split the outfielders in right center field, driving in Jose Ramirez with the first run of the game. And it's low, three and one. Balls and a strike. As Buckholtz about to make his 50th pitch of the game. And that's ball four. Well, you saw Mike Sarbaugh aggressively waving Tyler Naquin around on that base hit by Jose Ramirez. We talked to Sarby in spring training about the aggressive nature of scoring guys from second base. One guy that stands out is Kip. Uh, there's a lot of times where I, he really gets a really good turn around third. He gets a good lean, so he, he kind of cuts the angle off a little more than most guys. And yo, I feel good when he's out on the bases uh, to where I can be a little more aggressive. Uh, then there's other times where, you know, there might be that player that, uh, uh, you know, maybe doesn't get that little a extra, uh, that gear at the end of the run uh, that you're going to maybe be a little more conservative with. So there are guys that you're, you're able to be a little more aggressive with. He's being very nice. Didn't want to mention names, but if you give him the, your all every time out, and you know there's two outs, and you expect to score as a base runner, he's gonna be aggressive with you and score no matter if you're fast or you're slow. Just give me that honest effort every single day is what he's asking. Well, now he's got two guys that can really run the base as well with Ramirez and Kipnis aboard. Mike Napoli at the plate with two down. Popped up, foul out of play right behind the plate. And there's an example too. Napoli talked about he sees a lot of pitches per plate appearance that would maybe give the false impression that he's overly patient. He got a pitch to his liking right there, got after it, just didn't put it in play. That's okay. I mean, he had a good swing. He had the fastball that he wanted to hit, and he fouled it off. That's up high, one on one. You know, the situations dictate what you want to do as a hitter and, and when you get runners in scoring position you better be ready to hit from the very first pitch with nobody on base it's going to be a little different you go ahead and you'll take a fastball but boy when you when you got the the stakes out there on the bases and you want to drive them home uh, get after it outside two and one boy Buck Colts make a lot of pitches Carrasco has two though both starters have just not been at their best with regards to the command. They can't use the cold weather as any kind of an excuse tonight because it's 
beautiful at 63 degrees at game time. I mean, compared to yesterday? Well, uh, that's true. This is balmy. Well, I don't know about that. High and deep right field corner, and it's a foul ball. Boy, Betts was deep in the corner, and you could tell as he was down there, he was sort of feeling for where he was at as he got into that corner. Yeah, he stopped, he continued, and started. Oh, yeah, he no was idea. tricked. <laughs> I don't know if that wind or going down the line had anything to do with that baseball, but we saw him stop and then restart again, and he might have been able to catch that ball. But again, he's not a natural right fielder, so, you know, he's on the, the learning process, too. Came up as a second baseman. He's played some center field, and he's in right field, and it's not easy to do. Napoli, who has a very good inside out approach. 2 2 pitch. Low full count. So now this will be interesting because Ramirez and Kipnis will be off with the win on the pitch. As Napoli tries to do some damage with two outs here. And the Indians up 5 2 in the second. There go the runners. And a 3 2 hit on the ground is short. Bogarts throws him out. But Jose Ramirez delivers a two out RBI single to extend the Indians' lead to 5 to 2. Comad Bat app. And you can stay connected all season long with the radio broadcast, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone or tablet. Dustin Pedroia going to lead off the third for Boston. And Carrasco misses down low, ball one. Slowly tap towards third, your rebate. Throws about one away. It's time for our Buick stat of the game, and with Corey Kluber, Carlos Carrasco, and Danny Salazar, the Indians became the fourth team in Major League history to have three pitchers with 195 or more strikeouts. Joining the Tigers, Astros, and Twins. A 
nice breaking ball. Fastball, followed it back, did Bogarts. It's okay, this is where Carlos is normally pitching from in front of the count. 0-2, 1-2. That's where we see a lot of the strikeouts come from these Cleveland pitchers. Swung out and missed. He expands that strike zone and then you can throw that slider it doesn't have to be perfect and uh, you get a swing and a miss so that's strikeout number three for Carrasco. There it is excellent location you can see the, the swing by Bogarts and as I mentioned Carrasco with the outstanding stuff he gets ahead of you, you you've got your work cut out for you as a hitter unless he makes a mistake. David Ortiz fly to left. His first time up. And after Ortiz hit that two run homer in the ninth yesterday to pretty much put the game on ice, Terry Francona said afterwards, I wish he would have retired this year. <laughs> two quick strikes. It's almost like after the two run home run hold hit, it woke Carrasco up. He's been very good since. Yes, he has. Five straight outs, and he's been ahead in the count. Trying to get Ortiz to chase after a breaking ball, but he wouldn't do it. Get on the ground, Napoli, a long flip to Carrasco to end the inning. So Carlos comes up with his first one two three and the Indians maintain a three run lead. Look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lite. Home half of the third and the Indians on top five to two. Carlos Santana will lead it off. Santana hit a three run homer. 
that capped a four run first inning. Where this ball is, is off the plate, a little bit away. But boy, he stayed out and he really got his arms extended. Now, normally, if, you, if a guy hits that pitch, you would think, I got to come pitch him inside if he can reach that ball that's maybe on the outside edge or off the plate. Just inside. Santana. Coming off a year in which he hit 19 home runs, 27 the year before that, 20 the year before that, 18 and 27 respectively in the two previous seasons. There's a base hit in which he beats the shift. This might be extra bags. He'll take a turn. The outfielder slipped and fell, and Santana goes headlong into second base with a leadoff double. Love the hustle. I mean, that's a great opportunity. You're leading off the inning. You're going to force Bradley to make a play. And he hustled right out of the box. And when you go that way, how many times you see Carlos hit the ball that way last year? Love it. As he does slip to get down, you go ahead, you stay aggressive. You get yourself into scoring position right out of the shoe. Good job. The score dictates it. You're up. You got a three run lead. So Carlos, two for two, the homer now, the double. And the batter will be Jan Gomes, who fly to right. His first time up. And it's high for ball one. Action in the Boston bullpen already. Up high, two and zero. Oh. So far, the Indians' offense after Buckholz has thrown a ball to him after a ball one count. They're three for five and a walk. We saw Noe Ramirez getting loose in the Boston pen as Buckholz. Pitch count climbing over 60. Ramirez looks like he's getting ready in a hurry, too. Well, look, it, it was pretty evident that Buckholz has not been sharp at all tonight. Indians jumped him with four runs on three hits in the first inning. Two more hits, throwing a walk. Added another run on the second now lead off double here in the third. You don't want to let him off the hook though. You want to try to land a big knockout punch if possible. There's our old buddy Carl Willis. The two one. Check and that's just off the plate. Three balls and a strike. Swings through it and a full count. Marlon Bird waiting on deck. And the payoff pitch is swung out and missed. He came back and got him. Let's bring in Ashley Collins now for a quick Major League update.
right, thanks a lot, Ashley. Back in the studio, she'll be keeping us updated throughout the season. Marlon Burke can't help himself. And it's a, a quick strike. Swihart, who was over there trying to get to it. Well, this is one of those could be a turning point in the ball game. You don't want to let Buckholz off the hook here if you. Not when you have a chance to add on you know. again. You know, scoring the first three innings. It, Said he held up. And that gives Marlon Bird new life and now two and two. Well, he had thoughts of it, but I, I believe he was able to check it. the catch two down today's Levin player profile is Juan Uribe his 16th major league season two time world champ way back in 05 with the White Sox most recently with the San Francisco Giants. Has a pretty quick bat and he can get to the fastball. Yeah, he'll see a lot of breaking balls throughout the course of the year. He started off with one there, that's why you take it. But this is a guy that never met a fastball he didn't like. There's nothing that says finesse about his swing or his approach. I mean, it just swing it hard in case you hit it. Vicious hack. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been that way from the first time he was uh, 16 years ago when he was in the major leagues. If you watch him take batting practice, I mean, he, the line drives, they're just stinging off his bat. Now you watch some guys get in a cage, it almost looks like they're just kind of feeling for the ball, flipping it around the field. He just gets in there and it's like wham! Every ball that comes at him, like he swings it like he's mad at it. Well, Maybe he is. <laughs> <laughs> Sends this one sky high into right center field. And Bradley makes the catch to end the inning. Lead off double. Stranded at second. After three, it's 5 2 Cleveland.
out of the fourth inning. Carlos Carrasco coming off a one two three third inning he's retired six in a row and hopefully he can kind of sustain that momentum maybe for a few innings here. Well it seems like after that two run homer Matt that he, it upset him he threw that fastball that he just challenged the hitter now he's, he seems a little more relaxed they came back and got another run in that bottom half of the second and he's throwing a lot more strikes now it seems like he's under control. Moves that ball. slider he's that the slider has started to come into play now. And now you're going I think three straight 0 2 counts. There it is you see that it backs that hitter up that's how good it is it's tough to pick up the spin and you see the right hander giving way. Because he's shown he can throw that little two seam fastball and run it inside to you. Oh, put him away. And Ramirez, strikeout victim number four for Carlos Carrasco tonight. And that's now seven in a row set down by the Indians right hander. Well, there you go. That one just disappears on the outside part. It wasn't even a strike. I don't know if it even started out as a strike. He got Ramirez to swing and miss. Well, Andre has some more on Travis Shaw, who's coming up right here. He's three for six already in this series. Three for six this series is 13 of 29 versus the Tribe. And I think what stands out, guys, is that John Farrell was able to let him go out and win the job. He wasn't a highly recruited, you know, one of those guys that was highly drafted. Just says a lot about the Red Sox organization. And he told me yesterday, he goes, I just appreciate this organization giving me a fair shot to really earn a job. Well, and you're right. When you have a guy that's making about 18, 19 million dollars as a free agent, and, and you're given that opportunity, and he only played a half a year last year, and he played it at first base. So he won that job over Sandoval. That's all you can ask for as a player is an opportunity. But wouldn't you think you kind of go into it thinking, I really don't have a shot here? Sure. You know. Yeah, I would think so. Especially when the guy's signed and given yeah. all the money, it's guaranteed. You're darn right you would think that. Jose Ramirez trying to stay with that big pop and he does indeed two away. Well 2016 season tickets are still available and include eight different plans. When you buy a pro rated 20 game plan you'll get up to 12 games for free. You can just visit Indians.com season tickets for more details. Outside. Rock Hold hammered a two run homer to right in the second inning. They've got Boston on the board and right back in the ball game. But since that home run, boy, Carrasco has been a different guy, and you pointed that out last inning. And it was a 3 2 count, and he fouled off a couple, but he challenged it. He wasn't going to walk him. There was a man on base. The leadoff hitter, Shaw, got a base hit. It's after the Indians put four on the board, so he says, Here you go. And you know what? He beat him. But the, what it did, it woke Carlos up. That's what happens when you score runs early for a guy. You know, and he said, okay, there's my mistake. I, he's upset with himself. He settled in, and now he's throwing strikes. And then after that two runs, I think that two out base hit by Ramirez in the bottom of the second gave him that one back, and it, it helped him relax a little bit more. Line right back up the gut. This guy's having a nice series so far. Now stepping in for Boston, 
Blake Swihart fly to deep center field his first time up. He put Tyler Naquin up against the wall in left field. In the center field, excuse me. Carlos wants to throw a pitch and uh, he and Gomes can't get on the same page so it's taking a little longer Here comes the slider. Yeah, got a piece of it. Holt at first base with two down here in the fourth. And the Indians up 5 2. Carrasco trying to put Swihart away, and he does. Oh, baby. What an off speed pitch. Locked him up for strikeout number five. And the Indians still on top, 5 to 2. Mid-game snack, nothing like it. And nothing like this week only. T-Mobile customers can get a free season-long subscription to MLB.TV Premium. Go to T-Mobile.com slash MLB and sign up now to catch every moment on America's fastest-growing LTE network. Uh, did you send someone down to that stand to bring them up there for you? Mid-game snack, you said? <laughs> <laughs> that had your name written all yeah. over it. Look at that. There he is. That guy okay, in the so hood. Is that your runner right there? Yeah. That guy in the hood? Shh. <laughs> Who's that? Zap? <laughs> Look at that. Huh? It's a green so salsa verde. Corn. She's, Leave it. She's getting mad. She's saying, get that camera out here. They're mine. <laughs> Pitch inside to Tyler Naquin, who singled his first time up, his first big league hit, and, and came around to score. And what an at bat it was, because he was down to the count 0 2. He got the count to 3 2. Ended up falling off a couple. Checked his swing and ended up fouling it off. One and two.
chase one in the dirt. Swihart will have to throw him out, and he does. Third strikeout for Buck Holtz, one away. It's our great clip of the game from yesterday, Francisco Lindor. With a couple of hits and a run scored. It was a tough day in terms of the elements and in terms of the opposition, David Price. But Lindor did all he could to try and help the Indians offense. Tonight, he's 0 for 2. He has struck out and he has grounded out. That pitch is in the dirt, ball one. Ashley gave us that update a little while ago. Detroit down in Miami taking on the Marlins and the Tigers leading at 7 to 2. That was the debut this year of Jose Fernandez for the Marlins. Guy has electric stuff coming off the injury. But the Tigers tagged him for five runs on five hits in five and two thirds innings. And yet, Rick, he struck out 13. Well, so he still has that electric stuff, but maybe we just watched him. He struck out about 13 or 14 when we were down there a couple of years ago. Those numbers just don't seem to add up, do they? You don't figure a guy's going to strike out 13 in five innings and give up five runs, but you make a couple of mistakes against that Tigers. Yeah, lineup, they can you? hurt you in, in a in a heartbeat. Victor Martinez has homered in that game for Detroit. Checked on a ball and the dirt did not go. And a count two and two. Strikes for the second time tonight. Two away. Talk about a tough night. Colin McHugh for the Astros lasted one third of an inning against the Yankees. And at, that was after Carlos Correa homered in the top of the first to give the Astros a one nothing lead. After that, New York came out and knocked out McHugh with a six spot in the bottom of the first inning. Ouch. Did it without a home run. That's hard to believe in it, New York. You know? Yeah, it is. It really is. If you put six up on the board, you figure you got to have at mm -hmm. least one. One big fly, a couple of guys on base. Well, after the controversial ending to their game last night. Tampa Bay came back and won again today against Toronto to split the four game series with the Blue Jays. Well it didn't take long did it for that sliding rule to come into play. Wow did it ever. It was a and it was a huge huge play to go against Toronto and the beneficiaries of course with Tampa. I mean uh, it was Bautista they had bases loaded one out. Encarnacion hits a ground ball there you go. No harm, no fall right there. There was no reaction. Look at from dugouts, they figure they're down, but he goes to grab that foot. And right there, they went to the replay. They called the double play. Game over. Oh, wow. Get over. No. Shaw makes the catch, denying Jose Ramirez of a third straight hit in the game. Indians go in order for the first time tonight. They still lead it 5 to 2.
Levin Furniture. For the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin's. Well, it's the Indians on top five to two. On the strength of a four run first. And a two out RBI knock in the second. Since then, Carlos Carrasco has been locking it down. Breaking ball misses to Jackie Bradley Jr. And he's called out on strikes in the second. Yeah, he only saw three pitches in his at bat back in the second. Slider change up slider. Back out of play. Well, you know, I, I asked you at the time with Carrasco early in this game struggling with his fastball command about trying to look like Gomes was trying to get him to back off a little bit. And that might have been the perfect tonic to get him back on track. You see that a lot with pitchers when they can't locate or command their fastball early in a game, a catcher will. Try to nurse him through it by calling some breaking balls, change up just to. Yeah, but you know, this is the start of the year, your first start. You're over amped. You want to get, you know, you want to do good. You want to get out there. So, you know, you got to get into a rhythm and into a groove. And that home run that he gave up, he settled down right after that. I think it woke him up. Well, the Brock Holt home run came in the second inning. He just challenged him. There it is. I'm not walking a 3 2 fastball out of the ballpark. It cuts the lead in half. But then he comes back and he establishes the slider, the changeup, the breaking ball. Again, slider. He, since the home run, he's throwing 76% strikes. He's had seven outs on three pitches or less. So he just said, All right, I got to go back to pitch. You know, I'm not going to power my way through that first time through the lineup. It was 55 uh, percent strikes, and it looks like he was overthrowing the ball. He settled in, he relaxed, and those runs early in the game for the Indians helped him. Even though he gave up the two the two run homer. Mookie Betts is 0 for 2, struck out on the first line to center in the second inning. It was interesting. It looked like he started him off with a changeup, and then comes with a Either fastball. That, it was a little two seamer. Whatever it was, it was 87 on that first pitch. There's a good breaking ball, but a little high. And it's two and one. Couldn't help himself. There's that two seamer that just eats you up. Yeah, it just runs inside. By the time you start and you commit to the baseball as a right hander, it keeps running inside. It's just tough to hold up. And as you say, no hitter wants to get jammed. Yeah. And it's just, you're, you're, like you said, you're, you're too late once you realize it. And then you throw that. That's a good job of putting it in play, but playing right where they should. Kipnis with the put out behind them. But Carlos Carrasco has punched out at least five, and he's done that now in 19 consecutive ball games. That's an active streak. But look, who, he's second. <laughs> he's got wow. a little ways to go to catch. Yeah, Blake he sure Kershaw. does. He's got a few. Yeah, a couple more years of starts, <laughs> it seems like. 57 in a row for Kershaw. Now, five strikeouts might not seem like a big deal, but just think every once in a while, a starter has a bad day and you get knocked out after a couple innings when you just don't have a chance to get five strikeouts. Yeah, you got to be consistent out there. Right. Missed in off the plate. Mm -hmm. 
Austin Pedroia doubled in the first inning with one out, but the Red Sox were unable to cash in. Swinging bunt, but foul, third base side. Drive on one hop, Kipnis. We well, looked like a goalie that had one well, just skip by him. That had some spin to it, and you're right, he was a goalie. That ball might have hit and spun by him. Look at he's looking down. That that thing had a, a funny spin to it. Beat him stick side, I think. Watch this. Inside out, hits and it went the other way. Yeah, see, it hit him, beat him stick he side. Was, he, yeah, it sure did. He was looking for it to go right into his gut, and he wasn't sure. He can't believe that ball got by him. Look at the look on his face. It's going to go as a base hit. That had some funny spin to it. So the Red Sox keep the inning alive for Xander Bogarts. It's 0-2. Well, down in Texas this afternoon, the wind must have been blowing out because Seattle and the Rangers slugged it out. Mariners won at 9-5. Robinson Cano hit a couple of home runs. Leonis Martin also went deep for Seattle. Prince Fielder homered in the game for Texas, but in the end, it was the Mariners who win at 9-5, and they take two out of three from Texas. Broke his bat. And Lindor will shovel it to Kipnis to end the inning. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth here at Progressive Field with the Indians on top five to two.
Just ten dollars for kids 12 and under with the purchase of an adult ticket. Kids tickets are located in the family deck out of Progressive Field and are only available at Indians.com. Now Jason Kipnis going to lead off the bottom of the fifth. Jason doubled in a run and scored in the first, walked in the second inning. Kipnis, a guy hitting third today. Yesterday, Jason was in the number two hole. When you look at last year, his numbers in that leadoff spot, he hit 311 for the Indians with nine home runs in that second spot. Spot he hit 237 and in the number third hole, only 32 at bats, but he hit 281. But today Lindor in that leadoff spot and Kipnis in the number three hole. And a fastball in there for a strike. You, you've said before that look where you hit in the order in terms of you know whether it's lead off or second or third. It's not as big a deal as maybe we make it out to be. But what I'm curious is Rick how much of an impact is it on a hitter. When you know consistently the guy who's going to be in front of you or the guy who's hitting behind you. I think sometimes it helps when you have a set lineup. You know and out comes John Farrell he looks like he's going to make a move. I think it helps. When you're consistently have that lineup, but you know sometimes when you have one of your best hitters like Brantley out, there's not going to be a consistent lineup. Yep. You may have to yep. step up and move. You know if you're if you're intact, I think it'll happen. Well, that's it for Clay Buckholz. He goes just four innings plus one batter here tonight in his season debut. The Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen has been made, and I believe it's Noe Ramirez who will be coming on for Boston when we come back. district ticket presented by Sports Time Ohio is back and includes your first drink. Grab some friends and catch the game from the corner or the new drink rails in the left field. District tickets are available online at Indians.com slash district ticket. Well, Clay Buckholz went 94 pitches here in just four innings plus the one batter. Four times he went to a full count. A dozen Indians hitters saw five or more pitches in and at bat here tonight so they did a good job of maybe just wearing him out. The new pitcher is Noe Ramirez who appeared in 17 games last year. And the right hander will face the former Boston right handed hitter Mike Napoli. He came in too quickly. Got to wait for the 
the clock to wind yeah, up. Absolutely. Among the uh, the new changes this year for baseball, that's that's another thing that we haven't really had to worry too much about. But if a manager goes to the mound now, there is a, a 30 second clock. Yeah. Which is for a pitching coach or anybody. Anybody, yeah. Yeah, anybody that visits him out. He's got to go to his shoulders first and go for the 30 <laughs> second timeout before he can go out there. Well, it started, you know, with the breaks last year and they, they put him on the clock and it seemed to speed up the game a little bit. And, you know, Every little bit helps throughout the course of a ball game, but you can't slow down everything. And you know, a lot of times, you know, with pitching coaches or managers that go out, they'll try and stall, they'll let somebody get ready in the bullpen, or they'll send out their catcher or something like that. I can see them trying to do that, but with late in the game, when the game's on the line, it's tough. When you're trying to get something across if you have a young pitcher out there and you're trying to, you know. Go through your scouting report or something like that. And you only have 30 seconds. It's going to be tough to do. You better talk fast. So many of the changes. The intent is in the right place. It's the execution. You just wonder if it's if it's feasible or not. And that goes for the play at second base. Well, that's going to take some time. That was like a couple of years ago when you had to show possession when you had the ball in your glove that didn't go over well and they end up making it making a change uh, with that after the first month. I suppose. You know on one hand because it's baseball and because the game has been around for well over 100 years and it's so ingrained in our in each and every one of us the, the rules and the way the game is played that any time a change is made it's met with some resistance but sure it is. It, we, I think we really all of us have to get past that and say you know what if we have to tweak it here or there it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Well everybody was brought up with their own set of rules. Rolled to short they get one at second base throw to first is in time for a double play. Now there's a case where contact was made but that's within the rule. Kipnis went in he slid before the bag. He didn't barrel into the field or pass the bag but it's not that you can't make contact it's just that you have to go in just as he did and there's nothing wrong with that play even though there was contact made. Now here is and even with this there's there's still some room for for interpretation on this. But this is kind of the nuts and bolts the basics of the rule. And the most important thing is you've got to make your slide before you reach the base. Well yeah. Well, yeah. You have to slide before you get to the base period. You I'm, should. Well you, you have to but I'm saying that if, to go into the base you have to get done you. You can't go over it. There used to be roll blocks but what Batista did yesterday. And we showed you it looked like he went right into the base and it was that little grab yep. and that's where it's going to get touchy. Santana drives one to deep center field Bradley on the run he will make the catch. And end the inning. Five in the books. It's the Indians five and the Red Sox two.
favor of Cleveland as we go to the sixth inning. And unfortunately, you may see that on your high definition screen at home. We've got some wet stuff flying in the air. That's not good. We, we do. This week only, Rick, T Mobile customers can get a free, free, mind you, season long subscription to MLB.tv Premium. Go to tmobile.com slash MLB and sign up now. Catch every moment on America's fastest growing LTE network. David Ortiz, the lead off the sixth inning, takes ball one. Ortiz flied to left in the first, bounced out to first base in third. Checked on the ball outside. 2 0. Oh. Indians get their bullpen going. Left hander Ross Detweiler. And then right hander Zach McAllister getting loose. Swung out and missed. Nice change up. Ortiz looking for the fastball. Ortiz rolls one up the first baseline. It stays foul. Two balls and two strikes. 90th pitch of the night coming up here for Carlos Carrasco. He's really breezed through the last three innings. And that didn't miss by much. Full count. Well, I told you the Yankees erupted for a six run first inning, knocking Colin McHugh out. The Astros came right back in the second. George Springer hit a grand slam. And it's a one run game now at six. They're to only five. in the second inning? Yeah. He may be there for a while. Yeah. The 3 2. Out of point. McAllister and Detweiler both appear to be ready in the Indians pen. Depending on how this at bat ends up with Ortiz, you can almost see Terry staying with Carrasco. Through the Hanley Ramirez at bat, then he got a couple of lefties do up after him. Ortiz with a high drive, deep center field. Nick went out of room. It's out of here. David Ortiz for the second game in a row goes deep against the Indians. This is a solo shot, and it pulls Boston to within five to three. Well, he may be 40, but he can still give that ball a ride. And he did for the second consecutive day. A solo shot for Ortiz. Another pitch that's out over the plate. And deep into the night. You know, I guess the amazing thing in many regards, Rick, when you look at David Ortiz at age 40, who's obviously going to call it a career at the end of the season. Hit 37 home runs last year. He's already got two in two games this year. You know, I think back to when I was really young, I think about Hank Aaron going out at the end of his career with the Milwaukee Brewers. Barely had anything left in the tank. You know, people watch Willie Mays at the very end of his career. It's amazing that this guy, now maybe it's because he, he's just strictly a DH and didn't have to run around the field and keep his body I'm in the sure kind of condition has a lot to do. those guys did. It's out of play. I'm sure that has a lot to do with it and it has over the last 13 years. I mean I was reading a story where somebody somebody actually wrote a, a media member a journalist wrote that they were they thought uh, they admired Ortiz's ability to put up 600 at bats a year in and year out. Now yes he does have to run the bases. He doesn't but run. that's all he has to do. He doesn't run. Think about doesn't it. doesn't have to go out and play the field. He, all he has to do is bat four or five times every game. Now, I'm not saying that's easy. Don't get me wrong. But from a durability standpoint, come on. Well, you're not going to get any arguments here. Some guys don't like to DH because it, they don't feel part of the game because they, they don't go out and can't play defense. But 
you know, and I think that's why a DH, is there any DHs in the Hall of Fame? None. I don't think so. No, no there isn't. We, we talked about Edgar Martinez possibly well, as the opportunity Edgar, to be the first. Well, Edgar to this point was probably the best, and Ortiz with 500 home runs. There hasn't been a, a, a DH in the Hall of Fame yet, so. And when you say David runs, and David doesn't run the bases, he jogs the he bases. Jogs the bases. Uh oh, Ramirez just puts a charge into one, and that's gone. Boy, Carlos Carrasco serving up back to back home runs. All four Red Sox runs coming on the long ball tonight, and just like that, it's a one run game. And now Terry Francona is going to make the move to the bullpen. Well, I'll tell you what, Carrasco was on a roll, and then you can see location of a couple of these pitches. The Red Sox hitters are dangerous, and uh, Ortiz and Ramirez start this sixth inning off, go back to back. Carlos will leave after five innings, plus the two batters, allowing seven hits and four runs, three of them home runs. So we've got a timeout at Progressive Field. It's a one run game now as left hander Ross Detweiler is coming on when we come back. Carlos Carrasco giving up three home runs tonight. That's the third time it's happened in his career. Tied for the most that he's allowed in a single ball game, and it just changed the complexion of this game in a hurry. Back to back home runs makes it a one run affair, and now Ross Detweiler. And the Red Sox go to their bench. Chris Young coming on to pinch hit for Travis Shaw. They had back to back left handers due up with Shaw, then Holt. Instead, John Farrell goes to his bench. This is Detweiler, what he did yesterday in two thirds of an inning, nine pitches, had a strikeout. He's the only lefty in the Indians bullpen. But John Farrell might also be thinking, Rick, with the with the rain and potential forecast, he might have to try to pull out all the stops now. Being well, down a run. He faced Shaw yesterday. Detweiler did and got the strikeout against uh, Shaw. That's why he probably pinch hit for him. And Naquin misplays the ball in center field. Might have been some miscommunication between he and Jose Ramirez, who's a well a neophyte really as an outfielder. And it ends up dropping, and that's a huge no for question Boston. that there's a communication breakdown there, and both of them could have caught it. You watch him. So Tyler, unless he didn't see it. He was looking at the infielder and then he realized that ball carries that's his ball all the way. 
anytime you can take charge. You know, he took his eye off of it. He looked at his infielder coming out, and by the time he readjusted to look back up for the baseball, it gets over his head and it falls in. And it'll go for a double. So a mistake there. Yeah, you didn't see Ramirez calling for it at all, so it was it was Naquin's ball all the way. Yeah. Just didn't come up with it. And now Boston in position with nobody out, and Brock Holt at the plate takes a strike. Well, there's a nice play right there to just move with the baseball, put your body in front of it, and his job was just to knock it down and keep Young on second base, and he did just that. On a strike. Indians clinging to a one run lead, three one pitch, and Holt fouls it off a full count. And a three two pitch. Again, fouls it off. <laughs> that ball that was hit by Chris Young was ruled a double. I'd have to say that's kind of a generous. Yeah, but I mean, he could. He overran it. I mean, it was a mistake. He lost the ball, and that's like losing one in the sun. It falls. They give you a hit, and they give you a hit. No, a walk to Brock Holt, and it's not getting any better. You know, the communication starts. Watch Tyler take his eye off of it, and he's looking down at his infielder. By the time he looked up, I think he overran the ball, and it gets past him. He just. He, yep. You look up there, it's the only thing. It wasn't twilight to where, you know, you could lose it up there. It was just one of those things he took his eye off it. I don't know if he got a good read off the bat or not. Have to ask him, but it's not Ramirez's ball. Ramirez is just running over there to try and help him out. And as a center fielder, he could have easily got to that ball. It's his ball no matter how you look at it. Swihart squares the bunt, pulls it back, throw down to second base. They call him safe. It was very close. Yeah, they made it very close. It's right. It looked like the tag from Lindor was on about his the belt or the waist. But they almost had him. A nice quick throw by Gomes. You'll see he does get the hand back, and there's the tag right at the belt. The hand gets in there, in comes the tag. It was close, really close. Heck of a throw by Jan Gomes. That's the play when you're a base runner at second base. You can get caught, and we see it a lot throughout the course of the year. If a guy bunts through the ball, or you know, he, he squares around a bunt and doesn't butt it, you're trying to get such a good jump at second base, your momentum's going to third, and it's easy for that catcher to throw behind you. His job is to get the ball down. If he gets it down, you'll get to third base. 
if he bunts it uh, in the right spot. But you can see Mike Napoli at first really charging to try and take control and grab that ball. So he, his job is to bunt it to third base. Well, now it's a 2 0 count. Well, and they're, they're giving you the out, so you have to throw strikes. Flashes flying all over the field. No square this time. Swihart took a hack and fouled it back. Two and one. See yeah. that a lot with a 2 0 well, count. A manager will take the bunt off and say, why not take a swing here? Because you're in the sixth inning. You're not in the eighth inning or ninth inning where you have to really get it down and try and get one. You get a free shot because he has to throw a strike. They think you're bunting. He'll take the bunt off. We'll see what John does here. If he wants to put it back on. Mike Napoli went over and gave Ross Detweiler some information. Napoli, of course, played for Boston a year ago. Maybe he has a feel for what Farrell might do in this situation. Does he put the bunt back on here? They're pinching at the corners. Swihart squares and takes again. It's ball three. Well, Deltweiler looks like he's trying to throw the ball inside where he can't bunt it to the third baseline. And, but he's smart enough. He, he's waiting for a strike, and that's the key as a hitter. You know, you don't go after every pitch and try and bunt it. You make sure he gets in the strike zone. That's why when you square around a bunt, it's easier to see. You've got two eyes on the baseball. 3-1, he may let him go at it again. Swing yeah. it. Napoli not charging this time, and it's ball four. It's a gift. The bases are loaded. Nobody out. Back-to-back -back walks issued by Ross Detweiler. And now they're in a heap of trouble. Carrasco gave up back to back homers to start the inning. Then Chris Young with a pinch hit double. Back to back walks to Holt and Swihart. And now bases loaded, nobody out. Jackie Bradley Jr., the batter. Lefty lefty matchup. And the last batter for Detweiler. Well, it all started with the mistake. On a, a fly ball that should have been an out. So this is this inning right now after the back to back home runs has been gift wrapped for the Red Sox to see if they take advantage. In the air to center field deep enough to tie the game. Yes it is. Naquin makes the catch and not only do they tie it but alertly tagging and going to third is Brock Holt with now the go ahead run. One away as Bradley gets the RBI on the sack fly. So that's going to be it for Detweiler. He will leave with runners at the corners and only one out. And now a 5 5 ball game.
Toyota dealers. Jason Kipnis got the Indians off and running with a, an RBI double in the first inning. And a couple of batters later, Carlos Santana went deep three run homer, and it's four to nothing in favor of the Indians. Jose Ramirez tacked on a two out RBI single in the second. That made it 5 2 Cleveland, and it stayed that way until this inning when Boston knocked Carrasco out with back to back solo homers, then a ball that dropped in center field, a couple of walks, a sack fly, and now we're tied at five as Zach McAllister comes on to face Mookie Betts. Tying or the go ahead run now for Boston is at third base, middle infield, double play depth. Shot to third, your rebate. Goes to first, they get the out there, but the go ahead run will score. That was a mistake, I think, by Uribe because it wasn't hit hard enough to get two with Betts going down the line. And he had, well, as as Holt was coming in from third base, he was like following him just off his uh, right shoulder. You watch, he wants to come in. He hesitates, and now he didn't go for, for two. He went to throw across, and he continued to come home. That was really a, a heads up play by Holt. But I think if he fakes it, he's got him. Going to home plate. Wasn't hit hard enough for two, so Boston now will take a lead. And with two down, Dustin Pedroia looks at ball one. Boy, this has turned into just an ugly inning for the Indians. Six five Boston now with a four run sixth inning. And McAllister in for a strike. It's two and one. It's not a play you expect to see from the a veteran. Like your rebate third. Well, what happened though in, in that situation? And now Napoli can't come up with it. He recovers in time, and McAllister beats Pedroia to the bag to end the inning. Now Boston roars back. They turn the tables on the tribe with a couple of homers, take advantage of a couple of miscues, and they now lead it 6 5.
do now. Down a run. As we go to the bottom of the sixth, Chris Young stays in the game in right, uh, rather left field. And Brock Holt moves in to take over at third base. For the Indians, Jan Gomes, Marlon Bird, Juan Uribe do up. Noe Ramirez. Got the uh, double play ball and a fly ball out to end the fifth inning. They'll stay on to work the six with the left hander getting loose in the Red Sox bullpen. And that ball smacked down the left field line, but he hooks it foul. Well, that ball, you're right. It did hook foul because that started out in fair territory. It's almost like a sidearm delivery from Ramirez. Gomes was right on it. One ball, one strike. Left hander Robbie Ross getting loose for Boston. Again, he misses inside, and it's two and one. See if the Indians can get that man aboard and answer. A big inning by Boston, four runs, two of them earned, but it was all set up by some walks and a mistake after that. Oh. Missed inside and a full count. than anything else continues to fall here. The 3 2. And Gomes fouls that off the facing of the Indians' dugout. Kind of see the mist among the lighting. Yeah, I guess you got to want to look. I'm afraid to look. <laughs> Here's the 3 2. Missed outside. Ball four. And the leadoff man is aboard in the sixth. Today's injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. From the Boston Red Sox pitchers Carson Smith, Eduardo Rodriguez, Brandon Workman, catcher Christian Vasquez, all on the DL. The left-hander Rodriguez. Yeah. yeah, he pitched a good game against yes, the Indians uh, last year when we faced him. Other guys on with the elbow problems. Marlon Bird takes a strike. Bird is grounded out and popped up. Drove in a run yesterday with a sack, sack fly. And trying to bloop one down the right field line. It's a fair ball right on the chalk. Around second on his way to third is Gomes. And the Indians have the tying run now 90 feet away. Oh, you couldn't have walked out there and placed it on the field any better. No doubt about it, but he really brought the hands inside and, and flared that ball down the right field line. Watch the hands come in. Look how that ball was down and in on him, and he was able to just shoot it that way. Boy, I'll tell you what, that's not hit hard, but that was a good job to just fight it off and get it down, and it stayed fair. A lot of times that ball will go foul, and it's right inside the line, yeah. allows Gomes to go to third base. So back come the Indians first and third, nobody out. Look at Sandy laughing over there. Said, <laughs> how did you do that, man? I, I wish I could have done that a couple of times. Now the batter is Juan Uribe. He has grounded out and he has flied out. Up and away, ball one. Oh. 
Here's the tying run at third. Arebe socks one to center field. Bradley back, still going back. On the warning track, makes the catch. And tagging and coming home with the tying run is Jan Gomes. It's a 6 6 ball game. Oh, Arebe just missed hitting a three run homer. He drove that ball to the big part of the yard. And Bradley got turned around a little bit at first, but he was able to stay with it and make the catch as John Farrell will head to the center of the diamond. You see Bradley pull it in. The rebate well, gets job. the high five. Job well done. You get your sacrifice fly. You tie the ball game up. So the leadoff walk came back to hurt him. And for Ramirez, that's going to do it for him. Left hander Robbie Ross Jr. He'll be coming on when we come back. Right back to answer Boston in the bottom of the sixth inning. In the top half of the inning, ground ball to third. It looked like Uribe had Brock Holt in no man's land. He chose to go to first, and Brock Holt scored the go ahead run for Boston. Yeah, he had him tied. He never really made him stop. But that run scored. He came back, hit the sacrifice fly here, first and third, nobody out. Unfortunately, at first base, Bird couldn't get to second base. It would have helped, but. You tie the game, 6-6, six, six, and they still have a man on first and just one out. Left-hander Robbie Ross coming on a pitch now for Boston. And the left-hander lobs a throw over to first where Marlon Bird is back safely. Pitched in 54 games over his five stints with the club last year. Facing Rajay Davis, who's on as a pinch hitter, and Davis was trying to get out of the way, and the ball hit the knob of the bat I mean, for a he, foul ball. Was that the knob? Because I was saying, so. I didn't even see him move his head. It was. He's looking down at it. I didn't even see his bat head move, and it fouled off the bat. It was. It was uh, right off the knob. You were right. Good eyes. Davis sends a fly ball deep right field back his bats. He's on the track. He's at the wall and makes the catch and Bird has to scamper all the way back to first base. Well, Davis gave it a ride came up a few feet shy both Davis and Arebe in this inning sent Red Sox outfielders onto the warning track. Boy it turned him around and I thought with that wind blowing out it might have enough to get out of here. Watch Davis's reaction. He knew he hit it pretty well, but uh, yeah, it's not easy going the opposite way and hitting it out of the ballpark. All right, so two down, and Francisco Lindor at the plate, 0 for 3 on the night, and he fouls the first pitch right back out of play. Yeah. 
temperature at game time was 63 degrees. It's dropped down to the mid 50s. And that light mist still falling. Ball gets away, but Bird didn't pick it up, and he stays at first. That's one of those tough ones when you're a runner at first base just to try to find it. You're not sure. How far away it gets from the catcher. Yeah, sometimes it is tough to read there. You don't pick it up. It's in one time. of those balls, if you're not bolting right off the bat when it's in the dirt, you can't. You almost it pick it up before it hits the dirt, you know. Lindor shoots it to right field, but slicing into the corner foul. Hmm. See that ball? It's a, it was a good idea by Lindor. He's trying to stay on it and take him the other way, but when you hit it that way, it slices. And that one just sliced foul by about five or six feet. In the dirt, again, the ball briefly gets away from Swihart, but Bird, no advance. Into the dirt. That's one that, if you take off, you're going to get there. But he was unsure. You have to do it early. Look at Sandy. Sandy said uh, they were talking about it. He's telling them to beware of that slider in the dirt. But you have to pick it up as a base runner, and you have to do it on your own. Tom Boschetic says 15. Pitches from the Red Sox staff have been in the dirt tonight. Almost another one. And it was. That did get some dirt, so make it 16. I didn't know he kept track of that. Oh, he keeps track of everything. What color crayon does he use for balls in the dirt? Uh, he left to ask. 3 2 runner goes. Lindor bounces into third and kicks off the glove of Holt. And Bird will stop at second base. The Indians still alive here with two down in the sixth inning. As Marlon Bird moves to second base, Holt looked like he tried to smother that ball with his glove and just unable to come up with it on that short hop. Well, he was in left field. Now he's in that third base. It's going to go as an error. He made the commitment to come in, but he just didn't pick it cleanly. You know, it's a. I don't know if he stayed back on it or if he, he should have broke it. It's not an easy play. Any way you look at it, but it goes as an error. It continues the inning. Let's see if the Indians can take advantage of this extra out here in the inning as Carl Willis will take a quick jog to the mound and have a talk with Robbie Ray as the clock has already started. Well, as Robbie Ross tries to work out of this jam, Matt Barnes gets loose in the Boston bullpen. Jose Ramirez started the night with a base hit up the middle off Clay Buckholtz on a changeup. Then in the second inning, he roped an RBI single in the left center field. Then in the fourth inning, he almost had his third straight hit, a little soft liner to third that was caught by Travis Shaw. Now he's got an opportunity to put the Indians in front, though, with the go-ahead run in scoring position. Two out. And fastball in for a strike. Bird looking down at third base coach Mike Sarbaugh. He's basically telling him, get on your horse if that ball gets through the infield. Come back and tie the game through six. We're tied at six.
Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud partner of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. And by Ford, built Ford tough. Looks like many a manager after they've thought long and hard about, well, should I make the move here? Should I wait another batter? Well, in this ball game, it's taken a few twists and turns of its own. 6-6 six, six our scores. We go to the seventh inning, and Rajay Davis is now taken over in center field. Zach McAllister got the final two outs of the sixth inning. He'll stay on to face Xander Bogarts. David Ortiz is next, and then Hanley Ramirez do up third. Low for ball one. The glove of McAllister right to Kipnis. And Bogart's retired one away. Now back in the sixth inning, Carlos Carrasco was cruising with a 5-2 lead. And then David Ortiz took him deep. The next man up, Hanley Ramirez, waited back, and he blasted one the other way. That gets out of here. And all of a sudden, it was a one-run game. Red Sox would tack on two more to take the lead at that time. He's able to come back and tie it. Remember in New York, I told you the Yankees scored six runs in the first inning without the benefit of a home run. They've more than made up for that. Ortiz sends a fly ball to center field. Rajay Davis is there. One away. After uh, George Springer hit a grand slam to pull the Astros to within a run at six to five, Starlin Castro hit a three-run homer, and then Mark Teixeira hit a three-run homer, and now it's 12-5 New York. Well, and they're only in the fourth inning, <laughs> so there's a long way to go in that one. It sounds like. We've had a lot of action in this one. Two down, Hanley Ramirez awaits the pitch and he lines one up the gut. Well, he does a nice job of really waiting back, yes, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He, he stays back on it beautifully and he gets those hands through the hitting area. And that one there made McAllister duck. Watch it come right back. <laughs> yeah, right back where it was thrown from into uh, center field. That's nine hits now for the Red Sox. Ramirez with his second straight hit. And we're going to get a pinch hitter now as Pablo Sandoval will get his first appearance of the season as he'll pinch hit for Chris Young. So he'll go into third base, and I'm sure then uh, Holt will go back to left field. Yeah. He's another guy that likes the, the ball down and he, he also likes a fastball as well. Sandoval signed a huge free agent contract a year ago with Boston. It was largely disappointing a season ago and it was beaten out by Travis Shaw in spring training for the everyday job at third base. Runner goes. Swing and a miss, throw down. And Lindor couldn't come up with the throw. I think they had him out. If Francisco had been able to hold on to the throw from Gomes, it was going to be close. But at first look, Rick, I thought the throw was there ahead of time. 
Well, you get a look at it. You don't expect Ramirez to go. They just take off. Yeah, he didn't catch it. It almost looked like it hit him in the heel of the glove, and he was going to go apply the tag unless he took his eye off of it first. Just never really caught the ball. So a stolen base for Ramirez. And the 1 1 gets away, and now Ramirez goes down to third. That will be a wild pitch. Stolen base, wild pitch, just like that. Go ahead, run 90 feet away. Count is two and one on Sandoval. <laughs> Say what you want about Sandoval, whether it was a waste of money, whether he's on the quickly on the downside of his career. But he didn't win the World Series MVP by accident. Now the Panda Bear, they loved him out in the Bay Area. It's a little different change in leagues, and I think it's a little different going from the, the West Coast to the East Coast, especially playing in Boston. They demand and expect so much. You go back to 2009, Rick, which was basically his first full season in the big leagues. He played 153 games for the Giants. He hit 330 with 25 homers and 90 ribbies. In a place that's not easy to hit in. It's an unbelievable year, really. No question about it. You know, the Giants offered him a nice contract, but, you know, Boston offered him a lot more. The 2 2. Drilled the center. Davis makes the catch to end the inning. No runs a hit and a man stranded. Stretch time in Cleveland. Tied at six. Continues tomorrow night when the tribe wraps up this series against Boston here at Progressive Field. Alan Jensen start our coverage at 5:30, and we'll have the first pitch at six right here on Sports Time Ohio. April in Ohio is presented by Meyer. Janichi Tazawa yesterday was flawless in one inning, struck out a couple and just 12 pitches. He'll be on to face three, four, and five in the Indians lineup Kipnis, Napoli, and Santana. Pablo Sandoval stays in the ball game at third base, and Brock Holt goes back to left field. Well, he said he plays every position, <laughs> He's and he certainly does, and then some, maybe twice in a game. To 
Gonzala pitched an inning in yesterday's ball game and uh, didn't give up a hit. Had a couple of strikeouts. That's very good stuff. is outside ball one. That curveball finds the outside part of the zone. One and one. Now is still just. 29 years old, his eighth year in the Red Sox organization. Kipnis with a line drive to center field, and it's going to hang up for Jackie Bradley Jr. One down. Well, Tazawa started last year in spectacular fashion over his first 29 games. He only gave up four runs, but. Over his last 32 games, he gave up 23 earned runs. It's funny, you talk about relievers and how infrequently they pitch in terms of, of volume. You have a couple of bad outings right out of the chute. It could yeah. take four months to get your ERA yeah. back to where it looks normal. Yeah, because that's true. But that that's where you you have to separate it. You don't think about it. You don't look at ERA. You know, okay, I got off to a slow. I gave up four runs in a third or two thirds of an inning or something like that. Is what you're talking about. It it takes a while, but y your job is to be consistent. And when your manager calls you in, whether it's three outs, how many you have to get, you you do it. After that, you might be fighting all year. To make it look respectable. And in turn, it's only a couple of outings. Napoli checked his swing. Did he go? He did, says first base umpire Victor Apaza. And now Napoli in the hole one and two. Well, what do we think here? No. No, no. That's right. He's got a reason to be upset. He doesn't show a lot of emotion, though. Solid pro. And a one two. Just missed with it. And that's going to even the count. I think it like he thought, wanted that. Yeah, story. he did. I think that's why he sat out there and he looked in. He wanted that pitch. It was close. But you know, yesterday you go back and we talked to a few of the hitters and they thought the, the strike zone was a little wide yesterday. And the 2 2. Yes, he did. Hanger. He bangs it to deep left field. Gone to Souvenir City. Mike Napoli puts the Indians on top 7 to 6. His first home run of the season comes at the expense of his old club. Boy, how often do you see that yeah. a hitter gets a second yeah. chance and he takes advantage of it? He sure does. It looked like a split to me. He come down and there it is. It was middle of the plate, but you're right. There's the splitter. And there's the swing right into his wheelhouse. He hit it a ton, and boy, he hit it at the right time. And you know what? Whether he got help or not, he's happy about it now. Oh, so close. Now Carlos Santana, who hit a three-run homer in the first inning, doubled in the third, fly to center his last time up. Still only the bottom of the seventh here. 
Yeah, but the Indians have scored the last two innings. Tied it last inning, took the lead this inning. And here's that timeout we talked about when they were talking about the shifts. They ended up moving Sandoval over to the second base side and moved Bogarts back to the shortstop side. Carlos took a big hit. Well, that was the pull for Carlos right yeah. there. That's the swing where in his last at bat or his second at bat, he had a beautiful swing to left center field. That's the one where he tried to get out, extend it, and pull the ball. That's the swing you, you would like to see him stay away from, but the, he had two swings today that were outstanding. Takes a strike. And it's two and two. Does it stand to reason if you take that approach he had earlier in the game, you take that pitch the opposite way, you'll get more pitches to play? On the inside, yeah, it will. But he had a 2 0 count. So you know what? He was looking for something. He was trying to hit it hard. So I, I understand. Yeah. I understand it. He was he was going for it. He was trying to hit another homer. That's okay. You get the count in your, in your, well, in your favor, go for it. Absolutely. I, I'm not going to sit here and criticize him for taking that kind of swing because how many times do we see a guy in a 2 0, 2 1 count and they foul off a fastball the opposite way? They don't even get the bat in. That's, as you say, that's your chance to be aggressive and turn it loose. That's right. There's a payoff pitch. Carlos squibs it foul to stay alive. Gomes waits on deck. Again, the Red Sox have the three man shift to the right side of the infield. Carlos pulls that foul. If you could pick it up, Rick, but Tazawa seems to offer a grunt at the uh, at the release of every pitch. Maximum effort. See if you can pick it up here. Yeah, missed inside. Ball four. As promised earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Back in that first inning, two aboard, one out. Carlos Santana lift off off play buckles deep to center for a three run jack next time up smacked one the other way and this is just good hustle he's digging for two all the way and goes in safely with the double now he draws a walk with the Indians on top seven to six one out here in the seventh inning and John Farrell goes back to his bullpen and he will call on right hander Matt Barnes when we come back.
See how the Indians took the lead here in the seventh inning with one out. A very close pitch prior to this splitter right here, and he throws one to Mike Napoli, who down the middle will rocket that ball into left center field. And he unties this game. His first home run of the year. You can see the smile. He goes in. His teammates are thrilled. That gives them the lead by one. And your 2016 season tickets are still available and include eight different plans. When you buy a prorated 20 game pack, you'll end up with 12 games for free. Visit Indians.com for season tickets. New pitcher is Matt Barnes. This is the first time he's made an opening day roster. Last year he started the season at Triple A Pawtucket. And over five different stints, he pitched in a career high 32 games. He's on to face Jan Gomes with the Indians up a run. Carlos Santana's at first base with one out. Gomes walked and scored the tying run in the sixth. Barnes almost threw that away. Santana will steal a base, but really only if you fall asleep on him. He's not a base stealer. Ball in there for strike one to Gomes. Wide drive, right center field, and it's going to be caught. Oh, Jackie Bradley. He just took a knock and maybe extra bases away from Jan Gomes with a terrific diving catch. I thought that ball off the bat was going to be a hit and maybe in the gap he had a tremendous jump on that ball. You can see he was on the run and actually makes that play much easier than what I thought it was going to be. He had plenty of time got over there steals a base hit away. And if he doesn't catch it it's in the gap so you can see Barnes he likes it. Good play, good jump on the baseball, and it robs Gomes of a hit. And out two away for Marlon Bird. Bird came up with a key hit in that sixth inning. As the Indians came back to tie the game, he just blooped one down the right field line that fell just inside the chalk. It sent Jan Gomes from first base all the way to third, and Gomes would then score on the sack fly by Juan Uribe. Yeah, it was a thing of beauty. A little soft serve brought those hands in. Two quick strikes. Swihart didn't catch the ball at first. That'll end the inning, but Mike Napoli has put the Indians in front with a prodigious blast to the bleachers. 7 6 Cleveland.
presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Seven six, the Indians lead it. And we go now to the eighth inning. Really good job by Zach McAllister in ending in two thirds of scoreless relief. Gave up one hit. And now it's Brian Shaw in that familiar setup role coming on to pitch here in the eighth inning. A year ago, three up, three down, 295 ERA. Colin Calgill is now in the ballgame. He takes over for Marlon Bird in right field. He's on for defense. And that leaves the Indians with only backup catcher Roberto Perez on the bench now. Brian Shaw is the fourth Indians pitcher to work here tonight. He's got the bottom third of the order due for Boston. Brock Holt, Blake Swihart, and Jackie Bradley Jr. Brock Holt, two run homer, a single. He has walked. So he's uh, come around and scored twice on the night. Conversely for Boston, they have their backup catcher, Ryan Hannigan, and also Rusney Castillo available on the bench. That's it for them. A little bit high. That one was a little bit outside. You can see it. See Gomes trying to bring it back in. It was off the dish. And the 2 2 is. Yeah, you better run. You never know. Stay foul. Things considered, it's turned out to be a pretty nice night here at the ballpark. It was 63 at game time. Temperature now 56 degrees. We had a, a light misting rain for a while, but it, that's moved on. Same two teams wrap up the series tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Holt bangs it by Shaw right to Lindor. One away. If you can't watch the games on TV, you can now stream games live on your mobile device. Just go to your app store, download the free Fox Sports Go app, log in and stream the Indians wherever you go. Fox Sports Go, it's free, and you can have ball there games right there at the touch of your phone. Isn't that crazy? Yes, it really to is. Think about that. It's taken. You know what? Think about this though. Let's say maybe. 100 years ago, people were walking around with transistor radios. 100? Was it? When did they come out with the transistor radio? Do you think? What do you think I'm that old? And I know. Come on, give me a break, will you? <laughs> well, I know. Okay, why don't you Google it? <laughs> oh, come on, man! You don't have that information. I have no clue. <laughs> well, let me see. I first started getting them back in the 20s. <laughs> what? They needed batteries. Let's go. <laughs> you are good. All right. Transistor radio. What do you got for me? Here? <laughs> uh, here we go. 1954. Wow. That's I'm, the year I was born. There you go. I should have known better. I was born listening to one. So back in the 1950s, <laughs> people were walking around going, can you believe people are walking around with radios? 
Now we're saying taking them on your phone watching yeah. any baseball game you want to left field great jump by Ramirez and that is out number two that's funny that he came out in the 50s 54 mind you you knew that it has been around as long as you have. You, and I, you and Andre have been planning that haven't you oh my Jackie Bradley Jr. 0 for 2, sack fly back in the sixth inning. Bradley 0 for 3. Uh, rather, 1 for 3 yesterday with a run score. Chops it in the hole where the defense had vacated with that shift on. Yeah, that's one way to beat it. Uribe stayed right over there at third base. He just slapped it right through the, the shortstop hole. You can see three of them on the right side. Easy thing to do. And he does it. So a two out single. Bradley a guy that can steal a base. So you have to be careful here. At least pay attention to him. Betts drove in a run with that RBI ground out in the sixth inning. That gave Boston the lead. Rebe guarding the line at third base here in the eighth inning. Defensive strategy where you, you guard the lines late in the game is it's one of those things that's one of the beauties of baseball because it's it's always debated by people. Well, yeah, some guys like to do it, other guys do not. It all depends on who the manager is. Shaw's one one pitch way outside. I remember you know Jim Palmer, for example, obviously Hall of Famer. He doesn't like it. He, well, he you know, was a pitcher. His his thing, but his his reasoning is at least sound. And that that is, he said, if you play your third baseman normally in the hole because that's where the ball's normally hit, why all of a sudden late in the do, game with everything do, on stake, do you put him over here? You might because they don't want to give him an extra base hit. You know, a double will give you the single. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're going to try and take away the double. So, you know, it's a, it's a guessing game. But when you're a pitcher and you can locate and you can do certain things, you would rather have it the same way. Until it happens to you one time and they hit a double down the line. It's debatable, you know, yeah. like you say. It, but the, the problem is, as you said, Rick, the one time you don't do it and you get beat because of it, then you open yourself to second guessing. Yeah. That this whole game is open to second yeah, that's guessing. True. The minute you step between uh, yeah, the lines. It doesn't matter. You just have a feel, and you, it all depends on who's pitching, who's hitting. In the 2 2, he went around, strikes him out to end the inning. Brian Shaw works a scoreless eighth, and the Indians keep a one run lead, 7 to 6.
as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Wanya Rebe going to lead it off for the tribe. And Matt Barnes delivers low and away ball one. Center field and a nice play by Bradley. Boy, Rebe, there's another one of those yeah. stinging line drives that unfortunately hit that one right at Bradley. Yeah, three times tonight he's hit the ball straight away center field. Let that ball right on the nose. Not much you can do about it. Put a good swing on it. Rajay Davis, now he drove the ball to deep right field. And Mookie Betts took extra bases away from him. Jay signed a free agent contract in the offseason. Shoots this one off the glove of Ramirez in the right field. There's the inside out stroke. Hit it right on the nose. I mean, the line drive. Ramirez dies for it, goes off his glove, but into right field. So he gets a hit going the other way. Now, a good time with only one out if he can pick up the move. That ball. Ramirez, a nice try off the end of his glove. It's hit number nine for the Indians. And it brings up Francisco Lindor, who is 0 for 4 on the night, has struck out twice, reached on an error his last time up. See if Rajay Davis is off. Yeah, it's hold, hold, hold. Call timeout if you're the hitter. Trying to freeze the base runner over there. The nice you know. thing for Rajay is, you know, he's he's been in the game. Yeah, for so a couple he's, innings, he's right. Should be loose if he wants to go. Well, it, does he know this guy? Does he have a read on him? It may take a pitch. A lot of times, I know when we played against Davis and he knew your pitching staff when he was with Detroit, sometimes he wouldn't waste time. He'd take off on the first pitch. That's when you know a guy's move. Sometimes you don't know his move. You're almost... You want to make sure you can get a good jump or pick something up. And Sandy may help him out over there with this. He's off. There you go. Waste no time. And That's the throw way down, good base Steelers do it. And he'll stay at second base after the ball skipped by. And it looked like. No, he's fine. I thought maybe Bogarts was injured. I'll tell you, that's a good job. But the earlier you can go in an at bat, the better. And he had a nice jump. Good base dealers can do that early, and they try to pick it. And that's what happens. Uh, you know, he's trying to pick that ball and bring the tag down, but he's got to get out of the way because he's going to get clocked. You go in there head first like that, you can't stop your momentum. Yeah, Davis with his shoulder went right into Bogarts. I think Bogarts came out on the wrong end of that collision. You usually do. <laughs> You know, he had to sit behind the base and try to pick the ball. Yeah. Lindor pops it out of play. And it's 0 2. Well, I'm sure teams definitely have the scouting report over the years because Davis is certainly not new. Not new to the American League by any stretch. Well, he played in Toronto against Boston, you know, when he was there. So if you in fall the division. asleep on him, he'll, he'll go and take. Well, third. yeah. But he's in scoring position now, and you got the top of the lineup. That's an insurance run out there. You'd love to get in there. But you can see Bogart staying right behind him. That's the that's the middle infielder's job to keep a guy from stealing third base is to keep him close to second. Don't let him get that walking lead. But you can see Bogarts coming in, coming in and sneaking in it. Davis isn't giving a, a, a see, he, he, he's thinking third base. And his eyes are on that pitcher. He doesn't care where that shortstop is. He's getting his lead to where he's comfortable. He knows he can get back if he decides to turn and throw. Boy, he better change his pattern. See, he didn't even look at him that time. Well, and it also. <coughs> I know you've got 
a left handed hitter up there in Lindor but he can use the other side of the infield with a ground ball. It keeps pressure on Sandoval because he can't get too far off the bag. He's got to be able to get there to take a throw if Davis takes off. Yeah. Keeps pressure on Bogarts because he's got to get back to the hole. Well. The thing is yeah your, your job is to keep Davis from getting a walking lead and a jump. If you keep him then you should have an, a good opportunity with nobody in that batter's box on the right side of the plate for a, a pathway. swihart has got a good arm. He, he can throw. The 2 2. It's low and a full count. And again sometimes this is the effect the base dealer can have. A pitcher starts thinking about the base runner a little bit. Maybe it doesn't take much to alter your concentration enough where that's all the hitter's doing. He had uh, two strikes on Lindor. It's now a full count. Playoff pitch. Ball four. There you go. And now Jose Ramirez strides to the plate. Tori Lovello gives the signs. Tori did a great job last year under tough circumstances piloting the Red Sox to the finish line after John Farrell. Left the club in August to undergo the chemotherapy treatments. Tori and John both spent a number of years in the Indian system. Now Jose Ramirez with a chance to open it up for Cleveland. Cody Allen getting ready in the Indians bullpen. Rick Davis takes off. Here's the throw to third, and it's Got in it. time. See, if you give him a chance and you keep him from over there, then Davis takes off. But this guy's got a good arm. Swihart threw it. Sandoval was right there, and they get him. Look at—he had a good jump, but he—he he, he had to start from a, you know, a stop. Oh, he I didn't get know. that walking lead. He had a, a, the angle. Really? I thought Boy, he, he got like the elbow. Hand got in there. I thought okay. he got the elbow. They're not going to challenge it. Well, I just thought that first replay looked like maybe the hand beat him. But no challenge. And both runners were off on the play. Well, it's good hustle. But you, you were in scoring position there. And again, you had that left handed hitter up. Well Ramirez had a two out base hit earlier in the second inning. Let's see if he can do it again. There's the throw. We're from behind that play now. And it was really close. Boy, I thought his hand Look was at, he in thought there. it he thought it was too. He's sitting there. He's waiting for it. It was it was awfully close. Upstairs, two balls and a strike. Ramirez comes up empty. Four mile an hour fastball. We're even up at two and two. Seven six Indians up, bottom of the eighth inning. And he strikes him out to end the inning. We head to the ninth. Cody Allen will try to close it out when we come back.
Press the field. The Indians ahead by a run. Cody Allen is into the game for the drive. We're over here at the corner, along with Jensen Lewis, Al Polanski. Well, Jensen, the veterans picked up some of the young kids tonight for the drive. Yeah, he had a couple of young guys in the outfield, Ramirez and Naquin. A little bit of a, a little league snafu, you could say. Boy, you want a right-handed power? Mike Napoli giving him a one-point lead. He gave that to him tonight. Carlos Santana also going yard. More on that coming up on Indians Live, brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care as soon as this one is final. For now, back upstairs to Matt and Rick. Guys? Ninth inning. And it's time for Cody Allen. Before we get to Cody, let's look back at our keys to the game, brought to you by Mazda. Carlos Carrasco looked like he was clipping right along to a potential victory, but he ran into a buzzsaw in the sixth inning. Clay Buckholtz, well, he didn't have it tonight. The Indians jumped on him, and Tyler Naquin in his first major league start, had his first big league hit, scored his first big league run, but did have that play in center field that helped Boston to that four run sixth inning. Now Cody. He's got the meat of the lineup. Pedroia, Bogarts, and Ortiz. Yes, he does. And a fastball for strike one. Cowgill drifting back and makes the catch. One away. That'll bring up Xander Bogarts. Well, maybe had a little more carry than Cowgill thought, huh? We've seen a backpedal it. We've seen a few times outfielders tonight taking. Well, just, the wind was total opposite yeah. as it was yesterday. It was blowing in and right. awfully cold today. It's blowing out and it's getting stronger as the game goes along. So play deep. Yeah, the misting rain has returned here. As Xander Bogarts takes a strike. You remember a year ago, Cody Allen got off to a slow start. And we talked about it in Arizona this spring. Swung on and missed. Well, that was a beautiful pitch. He said, you know, the, the one thing that he, he figured out, he said, I got into a position where too many times last year I was trying to make the perfect pitch. And he said, I forgot. There's eight other guys out here trying yeah. to help me make plays. Well, you, you try and do it on your own and trust your teammates no matter what you do. You're there. Oh. Strikes him out, two down. He just came right back with that hook. Well, when he's got the, the hook working along with his fastball, he's awfully tough to hit. This one out of the strike zone got Bogarts to chase it. So he is 0 for 4 on the night again. They've done a nice job with him in the series. But not out of the woods yet. David Ortiz to the dish. 505 career home runs after he went deep in the sixth inning. Moves past Eddie Murray in the sole possession of 26th place on the all time home run list. Fastball foul back. Yesterday, he went deep in the ninth inning, a two run shot. And this was the home run he hit off Carrasco to lead off the sixth inning. So at age 40 in his final season he's on pace to hit 162 home runs. <laughs> the 1 Just missed. You can 
just put Ortiz on. Oh no, my goodness. Because no. Hanley Ramirez is swinging the bat well too, and he's right behind him. The 2 1. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Close, but called a ball 3 and 1. Take another look here. I guess part of the problem was he was set up away and had to reach back across his body. And not going to get that call. So it's three and one. And he hits it in the air to left field. Ramirez got turned around. It's over his head. He reaches up, makes the catch, and hangs on to end the game. Oh, Zay Ramirez. Welcome to left field. Seven six the Indians hang on literally to beat the Red Sox and even the series at a game of peace. Well this one had a little bit of everything twists yes. and turns right down to the final out. And Jose Ramirez has uh, done quite a job. In his first start of the year he got two hits an RBI a run scored and makes a big play to end the ball game. Well with that ball spinning you can see it turned him around and I'll tell you that's a scary he snow coned it scary feeling when you're out there and you're not a natural outfielder three one that ball almost came out at the fence. He knew he was getting close right at the end of the glove you he, boy he secured it with his other hand. And I'll tell you what, Bobby had a good swing, three and one. Allen says yes. Thank you very much. I love now, the way Jose smashed that ball right back in. Well, he club. knew it. That That's scary. Beautiful. That's a scary situation. You don't know where you're at near the wall. So the Indians can celebrate tonight. They win the ball game, even it up at a game apiece, and the series finale will come your way tomorrow night at six o'clock Eastern Time, right here on Sports Time Ohio. We'll be back with some final thoughts from Progressive Field right after this. <laughs>